Fragrant socks, good question. It's actually not real coffee. Um, it's not real or fake coffee. It's actually an emergency, which is a vitamin C drink. Emergency. Are you trying to get, on... to get sick? Can I get it on camera without it? <gasps> it spilled on my computer. Ah! Oh no! Did you actually? I Ugh. legit did. Should I oh, zamboni it? The boat test. Can oh, I man. zamboni? Your your what? Can I zamboni? Will you be offended by that? No. Do you know what a zamboni is? No. It's where you drink. <laughs> it's where you drink off the table. Oh, got it. No, I think that's the classy thing to do. That's in this the, situation. that's the it, when you when you commit a party. I was trying to show that it was emergency. I'm a, Party foul. I don't know if I want to. Should I zamboni? That's why I use. That's why I use a. You missed a lot of things. I'm zamboning. Oh my gosh. Okay, quick, Aron. Zoom okay, I had in. to get off the keyboard. Zamboni. Yeah, he's taking the slurp. Not in Fortnite, in real life. You didn't expect it, but it's happening. It okay. could be. It could be a forever, a forever thing. No, I dropped it on my computer. It's Friday, Friday. Gotta host the PCL on Friday. Where's the Where's that jam? Oh, we're live now. Okay, we're live now. All right, okay. Alexandra, turn off the music. <laughs> yeah, yeah sorry, sorry, Danny. Turn, turn it down. down now. We We are oh, here. We are here for the second and last of this week Battle Royale match of the 2019 Pro Chess League season. Alongside me, the wonderful Alexandra Botez. We are gonna rock it here for the next three and a half hours. Hopefully do Hold on the board and with the tunes, as you guys just saw. And uh, ho hopefully do what we can to uh, follow up that amazing show by Grandmaster Robert Hess and International Master David Pruis. So, Alexandra, we have a matchup about to go down between teams from the Central and Eastern Divisions, much like what Robert and David just called. Uh, we can dive into exactly what the Battle Royale format is here in just a moment, but if you're wondering what the teams are, you see them right below Alexander and I. You'll have the Gnomes, the Raptors, and many other from those two divisions going at it, but here we have it, Alexander. It's both your and my second opportunity to cover the Battle Royale format. Uh, your thoughts on what happened on Tuesday when you covered it with Robert and uh, the big shakeups we've been seeing at the top of the standings with that 24 points going to first place. Uh, wh wh what has this format said to you about what the Pro Chess League is capable of in terms of this exciting uh, day that we have ahead of us? 
Well, last time it was super exciting because the time control got even more rapid. So we saw a lot of players getting into more time pressure. It was also a lot more hard than I expected. Last time when I was doing commentary, the Chengdu Panda started at the bottom of the pack. Finally, they fought their way very hard to make it towards the top of the pack towards the end. The Australia Kangaroos leading the Pacific Division didn't even place top three. So it's a, a matchup where anything can happen. Top boards will be having to grind even harder than they have all season. Yeah, and uh, I had a I had a similar experience covering it uh, on on Tuesday with Anna Rudolph as we saw a big shakeup in the Atlantic Division as well. Uh, but this is what we're going to have here today as you and I get set to cover the uh, the matchup. A reminder of the format of the Battle Royale. We just talked to you about the prizes and the points, of course, that these teams are fighting for. But the way this works is essentially a round robin of each board. So in the normal Pro Chess League, you have board one playing, yes, board one for the opposing team, but also board two, board three, board four. So there's excitement in that, right? There's the potential for upsets and there's the, the imbalance when you have sometimes Fabiana Carwell taking on a low-rated player, but this day is not like that. This day is all a whole bunch of players, all within the realm of beating each other. Every single game is a, is quite literally a toss-up, and that makes it, I, I think, uh, even even more exciting, as you said, with the faster time control. So, the uh, the top boards there, you've been seeing the names there for a moment. A lot of them very recognizable to Chess.com fans. Of course, you have Georg Meyer, Alexandra Kostinyuk, JLH. That's uh, Jan Ludwig Hammer, Bador Jabava. I think. Um, should really, really shine in this kind of format uh, against a bunch of a bunch of players close to his strength in a rapid time control. On the second boards, Alexandra, we have some more names people might know. Uh, Mikhail Demidov, uh, Sergei Gagorians, to name a couple, but also sort of just a who's who list of the top board twos between these central and eastern divisions this year. Board threes, I, I admit that not those names are not all of those names are as familiar, I think, probably to all the fans. But that again is what makes it really exciting, is you kind of get to know some of the faces of the league that are helping their teams to victory, and you didn't really know who they were until they come up with a big win in a format like this, and maybe help their team uh, get a whole bunch of points in the standings. Yep, and we've seen that happening a lot with really strong, strong board fours who have been overperforming, yep. and we'll see that as well with board threes during the matchup today. All right, well, there you go. There's uh, Those are the names we're going to be talking about today as uh, the play will kick off here, I believe, in, check my watch, I think about 30 to 45 seconds, if I'm guesstimating. Um, but are, are there is there any player you're looking at today? Do you have any predictions before the match starts? Um, you know, I, I know the, the top boards, I guess, better, like a lot of chess fans, so I do look at Georg Meyer, I look at Jan Ludwig Hammer, um, as I said, I look at Bador uh, Jabava. Um, I'm a little bit part and parcel probably to that guy, Meyer, who's somewhere in the office here. He tends to hang out. Let's give our first shout out to Studio C just to make sure everyone knows that Georg Meyer somehow has the ability to be in. There he is, sharpening, sharpening his silencer. Um, is that a thing? Do you sharpen a silencer or you tighten a uh, silencer? Let's just go with that. <laughs> Georg Meyer, Aaron, Aaron, uh, our producer, use that emote proudly. Thanks, uh, thanks to everybody who's tuning in as we get set here. And uh, remember, you can go to twitch.tv slash studio chess if you're into reality shows where you just you see Aaron doing stuff all day for the for this company and trying to do what he can to make chess events awesome on Twitch. And I come in and out of the office and sometimes work. So, Yeah, he's uh, bringing the production value up by a lot. So thank you, Aaron. And I see that some of the games have actually yep. started. So yep. the excitement is getting underway. That's where you can follow the Pro Chess League on social media, what you're seeing right now. But yeah, we're going to dive into the games here as we already are having to pick our poison hill, Alexander. So many, so many big names and big games. Jan Ludwig Hammer taken on Jan Elvist. We've got uh, Lexi Sexy taken on Michelangelo. Of course, Luca Lenich, one of the stars of last year's Pro Chess League, helping lead uh, the Ljubljana Turtles all the way to the finals in San Francisco. So uh, that's a name we didn't even mention, but of course he is, uh, he's, he's a well-known star in the Pro Chess League. Yep, and it's good that they have him back. I know he wasn't playing for them earlier in the season because he was a little busy, but he's back with the Turtles. They're getting higher up in the standings, so hopefully they'll be able to be the underdogs that make it to the finals again this year. Yep. Let's uh, let's mention, um, as you said, we've got we've got Jan Ludwig Hammer versus Jan Elvis here. Let's go show uh, Jorg Meyer's game here against Daniel okay. for uh, Daniel S uh, Forsen, Daniel Esteban Forsen, but I'm pretty sure his last name All is. Right. I know that people in chat, whenever they hear his name, they get really excited because there's another streamer named Forsen. Mm -hmm. But he's he it 
he's the better foursome, guys. Right. Come on. That's Come on. right. <laughs> foursome, though, has been dabbling in some chess, right? The World Championship sent a bit of a, a bit of a wildfire throughout the uh, the Twitch community, right? You had so many gamers in other genres kind of catching the chess bug momentarily. So that's been, that's been kind of exciting to see. Yeah, that was super exciting. Um, and, you know, now that they watch the Pro Chess League, we expect to see more of that, right, Danny? That's right. Well, uh, I don't know exactly where to go, so let's just talk about this one right here. We're already talking about Forsen and, and Georg Meyer. So this variation of the Catalan, uh, where the bishop comes to a6, rather than putting it on b7, is always going to lead to more dynamic chess right out, right out the gates than, I think, some of the more symmetrical Catalans, let's say, where the two bishops just challenge each other directly on the diagonal. Right. Uh, here, here you've already got weird things to consider if you're Forsen. Do you... Do you play d3, but then you're sort of submitting to the pressure the bishop is applying, and, and there's always tactics where black might try to just continue to increase things on c4, or consider the move d4. Okay, he goes for d3, mm -hmm. and I'll be curious how Meyer approaches this. Remember, Meyer is kind of a Catalan expert himself, Alexandra, when he's on the white side. This is a yeah. bit of a ready Catalan, so maybe this isn't exactly Meyer's cup of tea. But, but Meyer is known for playing these slow positional games yeah. very well, so we'll definitely be able to learn something from him during this game. Yeah, and it makes me even more curious to see how he plays the black side of it. Um, I mentioned Cup of Tea. we got to give a shout-out to Coffee and Tea, two of our mods hanging out in the Twitch chat. Of course, yeah. Chess oh, Bay. Oh, is, is T in the chat as well? Yeah, he's uh, he's back at it. T, oh, we... amazing, T. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. Welcome back, T. Uh, thank you, Chess Bay. Thank you, uh, Crazy Coffee Man. All of our mods there in the chat, if I'm missing some thank forgiveness. You guys. Um, oh, okay. Well, Danny doesn't have a man bun today, but, you know. I don't. Give him a couple of years to grow his hair out, and maybe it'll happen one day. We, we talked about it. I'm not going to lie. We talked about it uh, before we went live. <laughs> Um, let's let's go over to Lexi Sexy's game with Michelangelo and talk about that one. All right, headed over there. We've uh. got Bador Jabava playing the white side of, of an IQP, but I was just about to say, how long will it last? And Lenich says, not that much longer. Oh, nope, oh. Jabava strikes. So, yeah, so he was, was up. Go ahead. Sorry, I was going to say, yeah, uh, Luka Lenich was trying to trade off his isolated pawn as fast as possible here. And Jobava just refused. What do you think the draw drawbacks of pushing e4 are here? Yeah, so the the biggest thing that comes to mind is when you're when you're not making the trade on d4, you're you're letting it be a pass pawn. Um, but as long as it's isolated, it's never going to be the most the most powerful or most dangerous pass pawn. At least with this many pieces on the board, makes it more likely it's going to become a target. But e4 does a couple things, I think to transition the structure to be aware of. If and when this bishop moves from f4, whether it's just back to g3 or even d2, now mm -hmm. you've got the idea of pushing f4 where, you're, where you'll have two pawns on f4 and e4 and uh, the potential of some sort of kingside pawn storm. So I'll be curious to see how Jabava approaches this. If his, if his idea is to simplify Alexander, try to get pieces off the board, is that kind of makes the d4 pawn more likely to be weak, right. or if he has ideas of keeping the pieces on the board and trying to do something of his own on the king side. Yeah, that's a good question. I guess it will... Oh, he already pushed b4, so it seems like he's attacking on the queen side. You don't often see players attacking both on the queen side and on the king side, so it seems like he might not be going for the f4 idea yep. and rather focusing on taking advantage of the weak d4 pawn here. Yeah, I, I agree with you, 100%. If e4 can be met, uh, or sorry, followed by things like queen a4 if you want, and then maybe try to use the d1 square for a rook mm -hmm. to gang up on the d4 pawn. So I, I like white a tiny bit, but, you know, to be fair, I think it's it's uh, still a very balanced position, which is kind of a cop-out I think chess players give. Like whenever we would read chess informant, as I was when I was actually trying to get better at chess. Anytime you saw an unclear symbol at the end of a line, that just meant that they knew the answer but didn't want to share it, or they were too lazy to keep analyzing. That's yeah, all I it was meant. gonna say it might be that they didn't want to analyze anymore, and like, hey, you guys figure it out from here. There's yeah, it tree. would depend on who the analyzer was, and I won't call any big names out by on air. Maybe I will. Anand was notorious for giving unclear in positions where everyone knew he had already like worked it out much farther, and he just he didn't like didn't want to give his answer. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. I know that all the top players when they're making DVDs, which you should still watch, they'll leave out, you know, the trickiest lines because yep. they put years into that work. Well, I'm kind of spying these other games over here. If anyone has an idea or if you see one you'd like to check on, you can just shout at me. Um, all right. I want to I take a quick peek. Whoa. Mr. Bot 
What ahead, about bro. WGM Hannah Marie Kleck against international master Alejandro Alvarado Diaz? Just because her queen is already on H5 and he has four pawns on the fifth rank. Um, yeah, that's that's Penguin Queen. <laughs> Penguin yeah. Queen versus uh, Peron Chio. Peron Chio. Right. Yeah, this is... Good choice, Alexandra. What in the world is going on here? And the best part is, it, it started with a French defense. I, which, you know, well, it, this it's is, the best. No bias could, could be a bad sign for my day. Let's take a quick look in the analysis board. You can keep your eye there on the uh, on the live position, but I'm going to show you what happened in the opening here. We had a French, a Tarash French. Mm -hmm. Bishop e7, knight of 3 Okay, so nothing spectacular that would lead us to think we're about to have the middle game position you can see there on the left. Yeah. Um, but g5 is played. Okay, so this is a typical idea in the Tarash for black, for those who don't know. Yeah. The idea is that with such a close position, normally you think that white is going to be the one focused on the king side, but black has an opportunity to be more aggressive than you would think because of kind of the slow development for white. The knight on d2, blocking the bishop on c1, and, and it's not like white can immediately take advantage of these things. And because white is already castled, that's kind of an opportunity to maybe maybe get some pressure of your own. Right. Yeah. And uh, I see that Alejandro played g5 very early. This is also a common yep. idea in the French Tarash. Actually, often, Black holds off castling. Sometimes he doesn't even end up castling to just try to attack on the king side as fast right. as possible. But he managed to do both, castle and push all his pawns forward, which is why I saw I thought the position looked so interesting. Yeah, and, and that happened with d takes c5, and then knight, the, the knight took the e5 pawn. This is typically kind of a... We don't have moral victories in chess, but when black can pick up the e5 pawn in the French, you know, safely, let's say, right? Because you can, you can take any pawn any time, but if you can do so safely here, this is often a, a good sign of things to come. And it led to an immediate big center here for black with the move e5. Right, which also opened up his light squared bishop, which is one of the most weak parts about Usually, the French yeah. event, Always blocked in most of the time, so he was able to liberate his bishop giving him a very good French position. Yeah, no, I'm looking at this position on the analysis board and super happy with what Black got, as much as it, it pains me to say it. Uh, <laughs> no, no, but uh, seriously, I, I, I personally believe that um, trying to meet the G5 line with the variation White took on C5 um, just backfired very quickly. I mean, you can already see that uh, Black was getting everything that you would want with a big center, F5, yeah. Queen H5. <sighs> Making moves here just feels so easy for Black, and I, I don't know that... Uh, I don't know that Alejandro Diaz is, is converting in the most concrete way now if we if we kind of catch up here to the live position, but I still okay. I still feel pretty nervous about White's chances with Black having a huge center, this queen right. retreating. I mean, how is how is E4 and F3 not just coming on the board here for, for Black? Yeah. I mean Yeah, those those moves look terrifying. Nothing is stopping E4. Black didn't even bring in his rook on A8 yet into onto E8 or onto D8. He has so many pieces. They're active. The center is his. There you go. E4 was pushed. Yeah. Yeah, the threat of F3 here, everybody, is, is okay, not just strong because it gains a tempo on the queen, but the moment you remove this pawn from G2, the bishop will be spying the H3 pawn, and that king's shelter is about to be, uh, it's like a straw house. Doesn't the big bad wolf come and blow down that house, right? I'm pretty sure. Yep. So The big bad Alejandro Diaz in this yeah, position. So yeah, so these pawns are not bricks. They are not as strong as they look, and I think we need to keep our eye on this one. Okay. So me, you think that maybe White is going to be able to get some counterplay here? Yeah, he play plays C4. I think it's it's kind of a, a I don't want to say desperate. It's a logical move anyway, mm -hmm. um, because you don't really Try have any other choice. Mind. But something tells me there should be something concrete already in this situation here for Black. Let's 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 move on to another game here though, because okay, we'll keep our eye on this one in mm -hmm. the uh, maybe we'll keep the left board up here and let's bring up a second board. I want to show that we just had this crazy tactic in the game between uh, Bogdan Belyakov versus okay. Karanki. If you go over to that game, that's uh, Bogdan Belyakov versus Vladimir Seliversov. Seliversov. Okay. And we just had a knight takes F7. Wizards, Robert Hess's favorite favorite team, or at least in terms of graphic. Yeah, it's it's hard it's hard not to not to like that that wizard getting dark and weird over there with that crystal ball. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's see what happened here. Yeah, how did this? We have to back up real quick. Let's why look is at there this. a knight on f7? <laughs> yeah, that's what. Why, that's why, why I did he not take it right away. Okay. That's why I had to go over here because I was like, okay, let, let's see what happened here. So, 
a, a modern defense by black, which inherently, for those wondering, started with this move, okay, this move g6, the bishop to g7, a6, this is the modern defense, but this Austrian attack, which is whenever you advance the three big pawns in the center against the modern, is designed to punch e5 through, and get a, and get a huge a huge assault on the dark squares in the center, and, and that's kind of exactly what white did here. Uh, just played right. e5 on move 8, and didn't think twice about it. Um... I'm biased to these positions, Alexandra, and okay. anybody who follows the Pro Chess League highlights show, which actually happened on Wednesday, knows that I, I really, I, I don't want to, let's just say I, I brought some pain to the streamer known as Bigfoot in a position just like this, actually. Um, this is this is a position where black can lose very, very quickly. Right. And, I mean, I think most people prefer getting the type of position white has, because it's obviously ideal to have a nice, powerful center, yep. get your pieces developed. And black has to really be familiar with those lines and have spent a long time looking at them just to figure out the, those ideas because they're actually difficult to come up with on the board. It's not yep. intuitive. Yeah, and, and when you combine that with the fact that there are immediate tactical threats like the pawn jumping to e6, which, just to show everybody, if, if c5 wasn't played, some weird passive move, e6 followed by things like knight to g5 and the immediate assault on all kinds of weird light squares here, these are the kind of positions that white can... White can win very quickly. So even though that didn't exactly happen, the idea is already in the air. And right. what happens with DE5 and now the move Knight G5, you note that E6 to stop the move, pawn E6 from white, is yeah. not possible because the D6 square would be opened. Right. And a, a big reason why this happened also, it seems, is like Black was too slow to try to get his king to safety. His knight still on G8. He was never able to castle because he was trying to push the pawns on the queen, queen side so soon. Yep. And uh, the, the threat of e6 here, I think, is what led to queen b6, but perhaps uh, Sela Verstoff just didn't even see knight takes f7 coming. Now, of course, if the king right. had taken it, queen takes d7, maybe other things, but queen takes d7 would just have been good enough. So if you're wondering, when we joined this board, what was going on, um, now we know exactly why that knight wasn't taken. Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, Okay, the king does eventually get the knight here, but now e6 check. Look at this position. If if king takes, the queen takes g7. If the queen had taken, there would have been knight to g5 with a fork emote. This is, this is <laughs> if white goes on to win this game, this is going to be already early candidate in my mind for, a, for an amazing game of the week. Definitely. Um, um, I, yeah, last time we saw an amazing attack as well by Mami Darov. Unfortunately, it didn't pan out. In this case, I think Belikov has it under in the bag. So, yeah, right now, Finally I mean, a tactic that worked with the queens coming off the board. It looks like uh, Sela Verstov has he's defended for now. So maybe we'll have another another comparable storyline to where Mohamed Yarov gave us fireworks a la Morphy, but ultimately um, White didn't get that win. Um, here, I think uh, here I think Belikov is still better but but it's not as dangerous as we would have thought um all right yeah, let's that's let's true. that's true black was able to trade trade the queens off the board and get all of the pressure from the attack out of the way so maybe maybe he'll be able to survive this i'm going to quickly mention as we've got our eye on that game between hana marie kleck and alejandro uh diaz but uh, we already had one game in the books just to show you how this one finished this is the first result so far here on friday's battle royale white mm -hmm. wins in this sort of crazy crazy fashion here just too many pawns and too many miners against the rooks so congratulations there to the first moscow wizard to get a victory oleg vastrukin and let, wow, let's bring, wow let's, what a username <laughs> yeah really okay let's bring both boards back here to uh or let, let's at least bring the main attention back to this game here that's about, it looks like, whoa, wait, black is on the attack, but somehow white has defended. Um, where did we leave this game? before? When we stopped looking at it, Alexandra, white was having yeah, to I'm deal with the threat of F3. Right. But and black... um, white had just played C4, trying to undermine the yep. center, and we were saying how... You know, maybe those black pawns aren't as strong as they look, but black just continued storming to the king side here. Yeah, and and he did. But what I'm looking at is after, I'm wondering where the where the missed because it felt like after bishop takes h3 on move 26. Yeah. Okay, now we get the bishop to g2 with check. It feels like the win feels imminent, right? That the light squares yep. are a problem. Yep, I'm I'm catching up to that position as well. Let's let's see what black missed. 
Yeah, he um, played bishop e5, which still feels like he's just threatening to win on the spot, something like take h2 and put a piece on f3. Mm -hmm. But after e takes d5, he took on h2, and now there was a threat of a queen trade, so he, so he had to run the queen over to g7, and perhaps that was... Uh, Perhaps that was just unnecessary. One of the simple mm -hmm. moves that could have been played in this position here was to play queen takes e2 and then bishop to f3, maybe skewering the uh, the two rooks. I wonder. I, I don't know if that was an opportunity. Right. Um, um, I guess in, in that case, maybe black had already sacrificed too many pawns for it to be as winning as we think it would be. Yeah, I agree. I mean, maybe maybe he just felt like, I don't want to get the queens off the board, so queen g7 makes sense for me to keep the attack going. Right. But uh, after knight d4, bishop f3, in the current position where we stand, after king g2, I don't... I just, I'm starting to fail to see that knockout blow, which makes me think that uh, maybe Diaz has already already missed the best of this attack, and yeah. that's why that's why other people analyze these games after the live show is over, because you and I can't always come up with the most concrete win while the right, action right. is happening so fast. And I will say this is very scary for white, uh, for black. Still. If white manages to survive this, because look at those those pawns on yep. the C and D file. He's going to have two pass pawns that are connected, um, supported by the rooks. I'm a little bit worried for Diaz since he wasn't able to to give that final blow here. So many games still going. Just to remind everybody, you can go to the chess.com server and use the command hash, the slash follow with the hashtag PCL if you if you want to go check it out. I'm saying that because I know I'm going to miss something. There's a million games that are under time pressure right now uh, as I'm looking at all all of these games still going. It's hard to keep track. But yeah, uh, um, yeah as a reminder, everything that's on the line here, everybody, if you do happen to just be joining us, we've got... The biggest prizes in online chess available, as long with those weekly prizes. If you didn't know, you can vote and help help uh, people win cash each week. Your favorite teams and players do that. Right. Like we said, follow uh, us everywhere. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm quickly looking at the game between uh, Grandmaster Jobava and Grandmaster Luka Lenich. Yeah, I agree. Let's, let's... Oh, yeah, Luka Lenich is under, is, has a minute on the clock. Um, he has a pass pawn on D3. It looks like he's putting pressure on the a6 pawn. He might be able to grab... Yeah, it feels like black should just be winning here against Lexi Sexy. Yes. Um, so he's up in exchange here. Okay. Yeah, let's, uh, let's bring the main attention over to that board because we're also under a lot of time pressure there in the Luka Lenage game because despite the fact that uh, Lexi Sexy probably worse there as white, he may mm -hmm. end up winning this game just because of Lenage's time pressure. Right, right. Um, it's really interesting to see positions like this where one side is clearly better, but he has the time pressure. And yep. we've seen with short time controls like 10-2, that can be a determining factor in the result of the game. Yeah, and you know, with Grandmasters, you expect that the increment helps them. Once you're winning, you can convert no matter mm -hmm. no matter what. But increment of two seconds is not like not like you're getting 30 seconds back on the clock if you're comparing right. this to some sort of classical time control or over the board tournament. Right. Uh, so so maybe let's see if there's an obvious plan for for uh, Black. Luca to yeah to just get that deep on or win enough material that he's fine and he could play without having to think too much. I guess. The bright side is there's no serious threats from white, any type of mating threat. I guess maybe knight f5 is coming. Well, I was just about to say, I think that Jabava knows he's losing, so he did this weird queen d1, queen g4 maneuver yeah. just because now what does Lenich have to come up with? Threats of queen c8 check, yeah. things of knight f5. Yeah. It's so much so that I wouldn't be surprised if he just takes on d6 here. To just get rid of the pressure. Yeah. And that, that may not be enough to win, but that's where Jabava is such a strong... Yeah, he, I, I, I had a feeling yeah, that Lenich take... would just be too nervous to even deal with it. Which, okay, black should still be better. I think now the white queen has to come all the way back to D1. Right. But you got to give Jabava credit, right? He's, he's losing there. He understands what the right way is to poke at, poke at some pressure points with just the threats of Knight F5. I'm sure a computer... Computer would have played that differently as black. I don't think a computer right. would have thought that giving up the exchange was necessary, but humans are not computers. So yeah, humans are not computers. Well, not yet, Danny. Not <laughs> yet. Not yet. We are like working on that technology. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> We're um, close. We're close. Um, okay. Okay. But no, this position has 
is interesting, right? Because the the piece count now is equal. Yep. Um, obviously, we like Black because it seems like he has the better chances of promoting on D1. Yep. But it's actually not obvious how he's going to be able to do that. Sure, if the Black Bishop was supporting the pawn on D2 and Black could somehow use his queen to uh, go to E1 or C1 and help the promoting square on D1, that would be great. But at the same time, Black's queen and potentially Bishop is tied to stopping the white pawn from promoting on D8. Yeah, yeah, well said. I, 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 yeah, I'm trying to calculate. I don't, I don't really see what your Bob is thinking about, other than to retreat to d1. It must be something with queen c8 and queen c2 with tempo. Mm -hmm. Wondering if there's an advantage to to bringing the queen there, but, uh, or maybe wondering if uh, if there's an advantage to inducing g6. Because one thing about queen c8, king h7, and queen c2 mm -hmm. is I think Black has to play g6 or f5. Because if you just go back to g8, your Bob will probably just take a draw. Right. Um, right. So maybe he's thinking about that. Otherwise, getting under thirty seconds now, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what yeah. he's thinking about if he just ends up. Okay, so he goes okay, for that. He, he must eight. have yeah, been. You were right. Yeah, because there was really nothing else to think about other than this line. If you weren't just going to put the queen on d1, which maybe he should have, because I'm not sure this was better. And he ended up losing all of his time advantage. Um, now he's got to play queen d1 anyway. Now it's right. forced. Right. Um... So in, in positions like this, where you, you're starting to see that you're getting close to 30 seconds, yep. he, he started thinking between two lines that looked pretty similar, at least yep. from our perspective. Uh, do you think he should have done that differently? Played faster? Yeah, I mean, well, that, that's kind of what I was what I was trying to think about. What was the advantage of this? I don't think there was enough concrete to justify it. You mm -hmm. might have more, t more chances of a swindle if you didn't get yourself under time pressure as well. Here, Black right. would just take on D7. Um yeah, and, and now bishop b4, I think, from... Yeah, and, and I'm mm -hmm. predicting these moves because they're pretty easy. I think this is going to be a straightforward win. Now comes queen to yeah. d4 for black. Yep, right. hitting, hitting h4, hitting f2. Lenit should take this home. Bishop d6. He definitely should. Yeah, he plays it. Yep, bishop d6 was super strong. Yeah, because now... if he trades off the bishops here, then it's really easy for him to promote the pawn. He can play queen c3, queen c1, yep. but I'm sure he has other ideas here No, I think well. you were right. I think that was the most concrete win. I, he should have. Now he just has to prevent queen e8 and queen g6 perpetual. Right. Um, and it uh, looks like he's done that. He can get a second yeah. queen now. The queen guards g6. And it's all oh, over but nice the crying. Game. Let's quickly move everything back over to that game we were following between Penguin Queen and Peroncio. Peroncio. Okay. This thing has completely gone wild but it looks like uh wait wait, wait. so she she just got def the better end game that's yeah, what you're saying she, not only did she defend that crazy yeah. attack but now she's just much better Oof. really resourceful game there from uh from hannah i mean yeah given that we we first came to this game because we were super excited about Black's position from a French, right? We and, loved... and he did have a good position. He, he had a great in, position. In defense of the French, okay? Yes. <laughs> yeah, and he did, he did. And indeed, it was not, this is not where we expected it to go. Nope. Um, but uh, as we let this one finish, this looks like it's one of the final games here going. Let's go ahead and bring up our, our two-board view so I can run through some of the results that everybody would be curious about happening as... Uh, yeah. Oh, wow, see, so... and Hammer won his game yeah, against was... Jan Elvis. Yep. I guess that's one of the ones you're going to look at. I saw that he was up a pawn when I took a quick glance earlier, and obviously he was able to convert it, so that's a nice yep. win. And we yeah. won't be able to dive into too much of the analysis here, but just to show everybody the results that are in, as Alexander said here, this is how Hammer defeated Jan Elvis. We had a, uh, a another draw for the Gnomes here between Kobo and Holm. Uh, Ladva versus Hog, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. Now, here another here a victory for the gnomes is another reason why you see them near the top there, along with the Tbilisi gentleman with two and a half. Yep, Paul, and I'm also uh, going to link Hammer's uh, Twitch in chat in case people want to see him commenting it as on it as well, and then come yep. back. To uh, Paul with a million sixes. That's uh, Melis Kanep. <laughs> uh, ultimately, uh, won won this one here. Uh, as we already mentioned, of course, Bedor Jababa fell. Um, unfortunately for the Turtles, despite Lenich's big win over Bedor Jababa, Mate Sevenik fell uh, to oh, no. uh, Levon Pens Ponsulea. I'm yeah. uh, reading a lot of names here that I wasn't prepared to just. No, that's fine. Out. But I'll, I'll, I just wanted to point out that Luka Lenich actually has been having a little bit of a rough start. He's been yeah. underperforming a bit. So this is good. Uh, yep. This is a good result for him. 
Yeah, and uh, another turtle fell, though, like you said. So Lenich takes down Jabava, but lucky for the Tbilisi gentlemen, the rest of the team did their job. Uh, Kuparadze obviously getting this one here, as we're showing. We've got Unuk and Volkov, Volkov um, here. Volkov wins as black, which is another big win for the gentlemen. So um, mm -hmm. they, they took three out of four. Georg Meyer drew his game with Daniel Forsen. Uh, for those who don't know, both Daniel Forsen and Georg Meyer are streamers on Twitch. They both have Twitch channels, so if you want to Google around, you'll find those. Maybe someone can share a link to that in chat. Yep. And, uh, well, there's a million other games that also had results, and we just, you know... <laughs> yeah, I think there's just one more game going, actually, and yeah. you have it on the board, so, yeah. Let's that, go ahead that, and... that wrapped up very quickly, actually. Let's bring that up and then show everybody exactly what happened in all the all the players and board matchups here as we as we wait for this final game here to wrap up and this rook ending all right um are you surprised at all with this the results so far i know the tbilisi gentlemen are leading the eastern division so seeing them at the top of the pack isn't surprising yep no not surprised by that um but it's just you got to give them credit for how they're getting there. I mean, they yeah. they brought on Bador Jabava as supposed to be one of the biggest one of the biggest signings and acquisitions of the year. And and you talked about Leonard struggling out the gate. The truth is, Bador Jabava has not has not had a great year so far in the Pro Chess League either. Um, right. But and the Tbilisi gentlemen continue to get it done regardless. Yeah, and and that's a, a big bet you're making when you're bringing such a top player, right? Because yep. that then you have to be careful with the rest of your team average. So you're very correct in saying that them getting three zero with uh, wins on all the bottom boards right. or the boards that are not number one is is quite surprising. Yep. No, it's uh, it's it's big because normally, as you as you said in the team format, Alexandra, when you have such a high rated top board, you expect there had there had to be some sort of compromise on the other boards, right? Somebody else right. has to be lower rated than maybe the opposing team's board two, three, and four, um, yep. and so. Uh... Well, it, it's still really early. Like I said during the other battle royale format, the yep. team that was in the bottom during the first couple of rounds ended up first. So let's not call anything too early, Chad. If anybody has predictions, let us know. Um, yep. Are you doing any fantasy teams, Danny? I did not play fantasy uh, this week, um, but uh, I did not play fantasy this week, but I know that a lot of people are because there's, there's a lot of cash on the line every week. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, no, what about you? You have anybody, any of these players going at it here? You have any bias toward them on your fantasy team to take that uh, $10,000 prize? I, I, you know, I try to stay unbiased as I can, unless it's an opening I like, a player I know. I'm just kidding. Um, but I didn't actually do it this time. Uh, Ulan yeah, me is, is asking us to check the game the gnomes lost. Um, the one game the gnomes the lost. The one game they lost, yeah. I will do my best to bring Let's... that game up real quick. It looks like it was uh, here was a draw. Uh, okay. Lodva Lodva fell. Lodva fell. Okay. Oh wait, no, no, no. Lodva won here. As oh wait, wow! I just realized I was looking at this, and the reason why I didn't catch it is because White had a queen, but Black is right. checkmating. Okay, right on so the back yes, rank. this is this is a very instructive end game here. Yeah, let's take a quick look at this. So, good recommendation, Ulan. Yeah, and now that we, while we have some time, good time for us to dive in here on the analysis board. So right. Oh no, he he missed auto queen. That's what happened because he could have promoted to a knight. Oh my gosh. Well, first of all, hashtag been there. Okay, <laughs> guilty. Right. As you as you know, as you know, it's uh it's something that can happen to the best of us. Some of us while on camera and then screaming. Um, yeah. Yeah. So pro tip again for everybody who doesn't know this: if you hold alt. I'm going to do it right now on camera, not control, and get a queen. It gives you the peace palette even if you have auto queen set up. So the point is, the point is, you don't have to go into your settings. A lot of people scramble and they go in their settings. Oh, no, I have auto queen set up, right? If you just hold alt and do that, you, you will get your option to choose upon promotion for those of you who play regularly on chess.com. So that's a, don't hold control. Pro tip. <laughs> yeah, um, you're speaking like somebody who has had the experience. Yep. Well, the oh, games man. are underway here again. So uh, where okay. where do we where do we bring this show to? What's yeah. uh, it's still really early. Um, yeah, they're, they're all in the the first couple of moves. So I guess we could look at uh, maybe Alexandra Kostanyuk's game, chess sure. queen, since we haven't didn't we see as much of her. 
Yeah, we haven't given Chess Queen as yeah. uh, as much attention as she deserves playing for the Moscow Wizards, who are helping, uh, who are leading their division, or at least amongst the leaders. Last time I checked the standings in the East. Um, right. So Kostinyuk, who's a streamer and pretty well known to the Chess.com community, now now throwing her hat in the Pro Chess League and. Yep. And this, is this the first year she's playing in the Pro Chess League? I believe so. I believe nice. so. I. Uh, I'm not oh. an expert on on pro chess league history. I should be, I guess, having hosted this for three years, but I'm pretty sure. So right, yeah, no, I know. I thought so as well. Um, interesting. The position with her game against Elvis right now reminds me a little bit of a a Grunfeld, except that Black has a yep. position White normally gets right because yep. um, Black doesn't have any center pawns on d4 or on e4 yet. But sorry, white doesn't have any, but Elvis is pointing the bishop towards c6 using c4 to try and undermine the center. Black can't take because even though it's a free pawn, it would really mess up her pawn structure over yep. here. And the typical idea here for black is to overprotect this center. And that's why you see moves like rook to c8 for those wondering. You don't even need the rook on c8 tactically yet, but you're preparing for the fact that, as Alexander said, c6 is a target and this bishop on g2 is kind of spying it like a ninja. You have ideas of queen a4 coming for white, followed by rook to d1. So the, the, this is the Grunfeld is always a fun one, I think, for, for t in a teaching mindset because both sides are playing for totally different things, right? If white is successful here, you will see all the pressure brought to these squares and, and black be unable to hold this big advantage. If black is successful, you know, well, it'll be pretty obvious. Nimzovich chess, right? You've got a bigger, better center, and then you use it. Um, so... This is this is a fun one, and that's that's why you see the position is very close to dynamically equal, and uh, both sides playing for very different things. I will highlight one more thing before we move on for this one, because it probably will be a foreshadowing of where this goes. At some okay. point, if the trade does happen on d5, meaning white captures, mm -hmm. the dynamic you get is the big center. Okay, it's not gonna happen anymore. But the big but center for black, over. commentator Shanks, big center for black, and the. We'll put it this way, and the two-on-one advantage for white with these mm -hmm. A and B pawns versus the lone A pawn. So that's right. often kind of a thing that happens in this structure. Mm -hmm. And um, with those, that two-on-one advantage, it's good for white in the end game because yeah. white can try to force and get a pass pawn or whoever has the two-on-one advantage. Yeah, but it, it uh, not going to be the dynamic we'll see. The, the, the thing about D4 from Alexandra is that it's, okay, you're really committing to the idea that you want these pawns together, and now you're probably going to play C5 to go with it. But the, the now you've got this very overextended center where the squares behind it might open up, the D5 square, for example. If, uh, right. if black plays C5, whether it's a trade on D7 right away or not, yeah. at some point the light squares have been have been sort of sacrificed in order to right. maintain your big pawns. And I'm curious, who would you, what side would you prefer to play here? I mean, it is close enough that I think it's definitely a style preference. Yep. Um, okay, now black ha black has a nice pass pawn on d4, but after c5, that pawn is kind of weak. Um, I actually really like that move by Elvis, and I don't even yeah. care if the computer does. I, okay, so I, I prefer white probably based on my own style in chess. That I I feel like when I have a clear plan, and there's a, even if there is an advantage for my opponent, if we back up a few moments back to let's say this position, a typical Grunfeld, even if my opponent has a big center, the fact that I have a very clear plan and I can organize all of my developing motifs around what I'm trying to sort of I don't know, I just feel like my mindset does well there. Um, yeah. No. So it, I, there there definitely is a trend with people preferring to play the positions that are easier to play even if they're not necessarily the best ones right um just because when, when you have a clear plan and you can maneuver it's a huge advantage because like you mentioned before humans aren't robots right or computers and and here uh jan is needing to play faster than he did to start because alexander as you can see has a three minute time edge but i do like white's position the move 94 threatens knight takes f6 as well as knight to d6 right Some, something tells me that uh elvis will be the one pushing for a win here. Um, yeah. And also, shout out to Robert Hess and David Proust in the chat. You guys were doing commentary earlier, and you guys are still sticking around. Not only do they love doing commentary, they love watching, and that is the, the best yep. thing you can say about the protest league. The, uh, the hosts, if you missed it, make sure you spend all afternoon backing up and watching their show. David and Robert did an amazing job. Uh, there's so many weird positions going on here, Alexander. Yeah, let's go check out another one as well. One that caught my eye is this one between Sergio Chess 83 and Poor Little Greeny. If I'm Poor allowed little... to read that on air, I don't even know if I am. Um, <laughs> look at this move F5 played by White. Again, okay. this is... 
I do like big centers. I cannot lie. I cannot lie. Oh, I cannot lie. That's right. Me to it. Okay. I, 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 uh, the bad bishop on g7 and g4, I can't deny. No, I'm kidding. No, this is this is just like huge for a while. I don't understand what court where, where Corbor is going with this because how can you not just love White's position here? Just take back, put a knight on d5, and just close your eyes and let let everything else just happen. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm trying not to just like all of the positions where White has a big center, but right. in all of the positions we've seen so far, it seems like White is just... Here favorable. I think White even just plays Knight D5. I don't even right. think White needs to... Oh, you don't care about the Rook here? I don't even care. I don't even care. Honey, ba honey Badger chess. <laughs> honey ba yeah. Okay, well, he, he cares. Yeah, I was going to say... Give a I don't, I don't give a bleep. I would have just played yeah. the Knight to D5 and, and gone for it, but... Um, but he's a little more careful. I mean, it's easier to give pieces when they're not yours, you know. Very true, and unfortunately, unfortunately for me, it's too easy for me to give away my own pieces. I'm I'm seeing a therapist about it. But the the, <laughs> the uh, to justify White's approach, regardless of my jokes about uh, giving up the exchange, I think Rook F1 was better. And the main reason, everybody, is because E6 is not going anywhere, right? Right. So he can play Knight D5, Knight F4, come into E6, and positionally, the light squares are already a problem, and so it was just unnecessary. I don't know that I'm totally wrong that knight d5 wasn't an aggressive way to go about, but but I guess um, I guess he just pointed out, like, hey, I don't I don't need to. Now I can... He could take either knight here with the dark square bishop and put the pony on d5. He could right. back up to e2. Yeah. Um, and, and black doesn't have that much counterplay here. He just yeah. played his knight on c5. Normally you'll see moves like a5 so that white can't push b4 and kick his knight up. Um, the only thing black really has going for him here are those two knights that are pretty active, but his, his bishop looks bad. There's nowhere safe to put his king. So why wouldn't white take his time? Yeah, I agree. And uh, so unfortunately it means I was wrong again about sacrificing the exchange. And here, here I think we'll see knight d5 and... One of the one of the just really funny things to understand about how dangerous Black's position here, everybody, is, is so okay, he plays knight d five, and I just want to point out my idea. I know it's a crazy sacrifice, but if Black does something, um Okay. I, I'm not even sure what Black what Black might do, but if Black moves a rook, for example, the mm -hmm. idea of coming in over here on the light squares and the bishop and queen using that diagonal, even at the cost of some material, is another way that Black could get in trouble. In fact, that's probably why Black gets castled here. Um trying to avoid the potential mating net that might happen if the king remained in the center. Yeah, yeah. The white's sense. just white's just much better. It's just positionally uh this is this is a dream for white. Yeah. I would love to play that position as white. Um I I'm trying to take a look at some of the other games see if there's anything else interesting going on. Um let's, We haven't let's looked just at quickly... any end games yet. Yeah, sorry, say that again. I said we haven't looked at many end games yet. We could take a quick look at the game between Hammer and Joe Bava just because yeah. it's a very instructional end game. Yeah. It's a classical one. Hammer keeps getting into these rook end games, so I feel like he's very well prepped. You you read my mind. I was going to show it. <laughs> Unfortunately, I was going to highlight the fact that probably there isn't much left to look at here between Lexi, Sexy, and Hammer because the rook ending is yeah okay should should be close to a draw. In fact, Black can play rook f one right now if he really just wants to force it. Um, right. And uh, what that would do is make white capture the a2 pawn, and then you could take f3 with check, and then we're really down to just equality on, on uh, one side of the board. Um, right, right. And what if black had a pawn on e7? It would still likely be a draw here, right, for white? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's these rook endings are... Uh, it's just, it's without without some other sort of clear weakness on that side of the board. It's just, you know, the three on two is just not enough. In fact, your Bob is saying, well, there's no point in me letting this game peter out to a draw right now, so I'll play King E seven instead of Rook F one and see if see if Hammer gets himself in trouble. But right. likewise, the A pawn doesn't really represent any winning chances for black. And to highlight that is even if White does nothing, if the black king comes all the way over and tries to help, even when you get there, White can just check your king away and then mm -hmm. go back to guarding the pawn. And Okay, I'm being slightly inaccurate because the truth is white would want to bring the rook over here before giving checks from behind. But the point is, when you have a pawn on the second rank, your king lacks a shield. That's the point. You, there's nowhere to, even if you make this long journey, there's nowhere to hide from the from the checks. Yeah. So neither side is really threatening anything here. 
Yep, that makes sense. Um, and I see that you also pulled up the game between Grandmaster Sergei uh, Grigorians and Grandmaster Ori Kobo. Again, White has... Oh, I guess I, that was the game we were looking at earlier. Which game was that? The oh, uh, no. Yeah, Grigorians versus Korobuk. Yeah, that's the game we were yeah. looking at earlier as we're spying here on this Rook ending. Um, Let's see. The... Uh, Okay, well, again, this is a deadlock 50-50 draw unless somebody just makes a huge blunder, but I'm going to assume these guys are playing it out, mainly because it's a team event. Again, mm -hmm. we have to remember that that constant angle because these guys probably wouldn't be pushing this position otherwise. Um, right. A quick draw in the book, so I'll just show that since it's the only one done. Marte Sevenik has okay. already drawn for the Turtles against the Raptors, so we will close out that one. Um... There we go. What other and games do we have? Let's let's take a look at this. There, there's an interesting game between Leonardo and Carl's DC ninety six, Yura Scoberni and International Master Carl's yeah, let's, Camalonga, let's... just because White seems to have an interesting attack in preparation here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wonder how much of this is preparation. Is that what you're saying? I don't know. Uh, I, I don't um, think it's preparation. I think he's preparing for attack. He's preparing here. for for, for G5. It. I could be prep. I didn't know if you yeah. knew something. No, I, didn't. I mean this is so yeah. This is a King's Indian attack line, so it's always really aggressive. And you see these moves like G4 and H4. Um, I think Black is defending it well so far. He yeah. hasn't castled yet, so he's not as afraid as he could be. Not as scared as he as he maybe should be yet. This is yeah, the game exactly. between. This is the game between Leonardo L3 ON4 RDO. I, why why put numbers in names? When did people start doing that, by the way? I mean, can we just like talk about that real quick? Well, like, chess.com became so popular that you can't have your own. You can't name. just you have I guess so. Numbers. It's like and for those who don't know, the Ljubljana Turtles have every one of their players, at least their regular players, has the name of a, a teenage mutant ninja turtle or right. or somebody from from the uh the the whole uh what is it? I mean it's a like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is a, it's a TV a, show. Well, I know it's a TV show, but it's also like I wanted to say it's like a no a a cultural. Phenomenon. I mean, is Harry I just, I, is I'm trying to exactly is Harry Potter just a book anymore? It's like some people believe it exists, right? I mean, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Are you saying you believe Harry Potter exists, Danny? That's okay. It's, this is not appropriate the, the to confront me about this. This is not the setting to confront me about this. All right, uh, but Le <laughs> Leonardo, uh, as uh, as we said is playing the white pieces. And yeah, I don't see why G5 shouldn't just be played. Right. Looks looks like another game where might just, white just might have a, a huge center and a potential of a, of a very big attack here. Yeah, I, I'm actually surprised that um, on move 24, Black played Queen C7, because I thought that was holding the G5 move. Uh -huh. he, he clearly saw that he had to do something here, so he's trying to prepare for the C4 push. Right. I just think maybe it would have been better for him to be a little bit more defensive. I agree with you 100%. Uh, I, I don't I don't know why uh, Leonardo, that being uh, Scoberne, uh, your Scoberne, if I'm saying that correctly. Also, just... Mac, Max commented something funny. Not only does he, Harry Potter, exist, he streams often. They're obviously referring to Gotham Chess. That's right. He has that uh, Harry Potter emo. My, my Wingardium <laughs> Levy Rosman mug is in the kitchen. Okay. It, we rock, we rock PCL, but if we want to show our producer, real, actually, yeah, he'll just—he's so fast. He just brings me the. There you go. There you go. Wingardium Levy Rosman. Wingardium <laughs> Levy Rosman. Yeah, I mean, when you have a producer that fast, you do think it's yeah. magic. So I see where you're coming. Right there, you go. Right. Yep. Um. All right. Well. Uh. Again, I I don't know exactly why. Uh. Scobernet has uh hasn't just played G5, but okay, Bishop of four. He can move okay. the king and, and then put the queen on g3, I'm guessing, and he's got this battery against the d6 pawn. So white is right. still kind of holding all the cards here, but I, I think it could even be more aggressive. Yeah, um, yeah, I agree. Um, for those wondering, we'll just quickly show you that uh, Hammer and uh, Jababa did indeed just agree to a draw, so okay. we'll, we'll go right back. But uh, as predicted, we were not uh, not underestimating that that game was just about to be simple. Um the um okay. let's see a lot of other games obviously going again if you're just joining us welcome 2019 pro chess league battle royale week slightly different format than you normally see with players playing against only those within their rating 
uh, mm -hmm. and uh, competing for even more points than you would get in a normal victory uh, week. As you can see right there, first place is 24 points. The normal points won in the standings is 10 points. For those yep. of you who follow the league closely, you know that. So a lot on the line this week. We've already seen some big shakeups in the standings. These are all the players that are going at it. It's a round robin in each board. So board ones, every one of those players will play each other today. Board two, board three, board four, et cetera, right? Rinse and repeat everything I just said. It applies to yep. all boards there. And, uh, and yeah, exciting. And I, and I would say that this format, when everybody's playing people similar strength, does show a different type of skill set, especially for board ones and board yep. fours. Board ones can be better at beating lower rated players, but maybe they get tired out more often playing other grandmasters. Board fours, like Christopher Yu, can be really good at being GMs, beating right. GMs, so maybe not having that same consistent result when playing right. people similar levels. So right. it's it's nice to test people on all of their chess strengths and weaknesses. Yep. That's what this format does. Yeah, it's a good point, and I, and I think it, it really is true. You say, like, how would somebody ever be better at beating GMs and not players at their level? But, well, okay, part right. of the reason is that those GMs have a lot of other players they're playing, and then they play this sort of low-rated, underrated kid on board four. I should get this game easily. Maybe, you yeah. know, maybe there's all kinds of psychology that goes into those things. And, um, yeah, when you've got everyone playing the players within their peer group, definitely leads to some, we've already seen some interesting and different results. Let's go to Georg Meyer's game versus Lorenzo Ladici. because. Okay. One, because I think we might see some magic here in just a moment. Um, yeah. And I'm hoping With that Meyer... Um, checkmate, maybe? Yeah, he's, he's, he's on, the, um, on the prowl here. John Urschel is just like I clacking his fingers together. I thought that Mayer only together. won games by grinding small positional advantages into stronger endgame advantages. But he can actually attack, so uh, let's see what Every happens. Every once in a while. Yeah. Oh, Knight G4 is played. What in the world? How is there not, how is there not a mate... On the board here. I mean, come on. I'm uh, I'm looking for it. Uh, let's see. I want to so, find it. This is like puzzle rush time. I feel like I only have a few moments to find it before Meyer plays it. Right. Well, on the bright side, he has four minutes to yeah. uh, Lorenzo's eight seconds. So he, he just took a pawn. Okay. Now this a pawn. Is Meyer, we know. <laughs> classic, classic <laughs> Meyer, right? I'll, I'll stop. Yep. Okay, now you, I think he'll probably just bring the queen back to h5, if I had to guess. Um, yeah, he does, because now the threat of queen g6 is strong, combined with the threat of h3 that he took black's h-pawn. That, that black knight might just get trapped, so... Right. Um, um, I mean, black, white can play... I, I think h3, and if knight e5, you can even slide the rook over to h4. Yeah. Um, okay, queen, yeah, g6, like queen g6 maybe comes first, and then h3, because then if the knight moves, it's uh, Chekalina la Schlamba on the h-file. Um, Rook fc1 also makes sense. He's looking towards c7. Now he could just take on c5 or take on Passant. Um, not as fancy as I wanted. I really wanted this queen g6, h3, and rook h4 mate. You wanted a mate. I but know. He'll give you I a know. win, and, and I, he'll say that's, that's okay, too. Yep, I know. All right, well, now now White's just up a rook, so I, I think uh, Ladici is, uh, well, we'll let him do his own math. Maybe he just lose, lost track of things, but... Okay. Right. Um, oh no, Alexander Custom. I was just about to me. say a result is in with um, Elvis getting a victory. I did. I did like the position for Elvis heading into this sort of, as you said, reverse Grunfeld endgame. But, but how exactly did that happen? We don't know. Let, let's. Uh, we'll keep the live board up there. Let's take a look at what mm -hmm. happened here in this game. Between, we'll keep the live board on that game between Lenich and uh, Forsen. But uh, let's take a look here at what happened because we okay. left the game, Alexandra. Kind of at about this well, transition Very early here. on, yeah. Yeah, the knight had come to e4, and and then it came to d6. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, as we said, I expected white to be better here, mainly because the simplification of everything, black's pawns on the queen side are just weak. The c6 right. and a pawn both isolated. Yep, and, and I always wonder if having two weak pawns like that is enough for white to push for a, for a win. win. In a lot yeah. of GM games, it often isn't, but I'm so I'm very curious to see what how he did to convert it. Yep. So let's see. So B3, Queen C2, kind of simple chess here from white. Uh, note that there was no Queen takes A2 because we would mm -hmm. have had mate on D8 in this position. Um, so G6, H4, and I guess one thing Elvis did really well, Alexander, is I just kind of quickly go through the moves here from about move 27 to 35. Um, okay. Is, is he just 
cre he kind of poked at both sides of the board long enough for time pressure to become a thing for both players and yeah for it to get harder for white to defend or sorry for black to defend and the fact that he this move h4 on move 26 with the threat of h5 don't underestimate how irritating that is in a rapid game because you don't want to allow h5 and h6 now you've got now you got dark square problems but if you play h5 yourself as alexander did there's there's a whole new type of tactics. There's going to be tactics on the G6 pawn. There's going to be tactics against the open king on the new dark square entry point. So, again, it's a simple position, but that's why guys like Jan Elvis have been winning chess games for years. Right. Because, and, and, in fact, I didn't think it was going to be this direct, but, indeed, he found this amazing tactic of bringing the bishop to E4 and just blowing things open. Takes on G6, queen G5, and then infiltrates with the rook, and it was all over... Uh, but the crying after the queen loss. So, <laughs> yeah, it, it seems like maybe she she missed that there. Yeah, and I but I think it's I think it's instructive because it was sort of like I I would compare this to how Magnus Carlsen wins chess games, right? I mean, okay, objectively right. the computers do believe the position was about equal, and as you said, you know, Black's queenside weaknesses shouldn't be enough to you know they're not enough when they when the eye looks at them to think Black is just much worse. But this is a really hard position for Black to play. And uh, creating weaknesses on both sides of the board is how you get people to make mistakes. So, yeah, yeah. There you go. Uh, Meyer did indeed eventually win that game. He did win his game. Well, I, I'm not surprised. I'm surprised how he won it. Maybe a little bit, but that's that's all. Um, it looks like Hannah. Um, I keep wanting to say Hannah Banana because I just think of <laughs> it. I don't know why, but anyway, it's Hannah did nice fall try. in her second game after defending that amazing game against uh, Diaz. Uh, the mm -hmm. first one you and I looked at. Now she loses to Mikhail Kuznetsov. Um, so that is another game in the books. Okay. And uh, let's... Whoa. Let, let's keep game? both the boards up that we've got up here because the other game I want to mm -hmm. look at is Gregorians and Kobo. Both of these guys on the right side of your screen are under 20 seconds. Okay. And it's and it's crazy. Whoa. Yeah, a lot of, oh. all the time pressure is going on right now. Anticlimactic. They just agree to a draw. It's like, what? Why? Well, not, not, neither of them wanted to deal with the pressure here. It's a, a little understandable. Not what we wanted to see, but... Not I, what we wanted to see yeah. at all. All right, there's a million games under time pressure. I'm going to bring up this one here. Again, keep uh, your eyes on this game here between Lenich and Forsen. Obviously, also very exciting and a big game right there for the Turtles on the left side as they try to get out of the cellar there. Right. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay. Looks like Lenich... Oh my gosh, it looks like he's about to run on time. Run out yeah. on time. I think he just blundered, yeah. Um, we've got it on both boards here. Let's bring up the other Turtles game as we see another big one. Yeah, Lenich. Luka Lenich lost on time, but he he was also in a tough position to defend. Yeah, there. he was in a super tough position in that final one there. The bishop was threatening to come to g4 and skewer the rook, so... Right. Um, yeah, a big a big loss there for the turtles, especially because it doesn't look like uh, no. the, the white is in good shape in this one either. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. No, the, the the turtles are having a really rough start. I mean. Yeah, rough start they, to the they season. They surprised us last year, but. Okay, so there's two games still going between Andre Diamant and Bogdan. Belyakov. That one looks like a draw, and ooh, the one between uh, Grandmaster Eleven. Pant Sulia and International Master Christian Holm. So Schwarzman yep. IP and in between move. That's the one you're looking at. Yeah, it should should be a draw, I think, if White can if White can maintain a blockade and get the F pawn. Um, right. And, and I and I think White's about to do that. Actually, this move knight g4 just shows how ma amazingly tricky the knights are guarding guarding checks and attacking things. I think the king can. Can the king go to just g2 and say no to any... any? He goes to f3, but that allows queen h3. Okay, okay. white is playing for a draw anyway, so... Yeah. You're not really upset about queen h3, but I but I think king g2 might have just been the simplest way to get that draw, and he can still play it now. Right. I, I guess he's not too worried, because black yeah. has to keep checking the king, otherwise he grabs the pawn. If he grabs the pawn, it's a draw. Right. Um, but you, you're right, there are more accurate ways to do it here. Um Okay, now now you can take f6 either way and and still yeah. still should be a draw would take massive blunders. Not the worst result here for the gnomes um to maintain ma maintain pace, excuse me, with the gentleman. Um, right, it's it's actually a, a good result since um obviously black with 
lower rated is a, a draw is a nice result. This one should also be a draw, it looks like, between Diamant and Nibelyakov, unless Black plays King A6 and mates himself <laughs> on A7 somehow. Somehow, yeah. Um, but even that isn't actually made. I guess King A6, King B8, you can play check with the Rook, but still there's there's right. no progress to be made here, really, for either side. Um, here, here comes... Unless he uh, mouse slips, you know. Yeah, I, don't, don't have Rook take C4 previewed, uh, yeah. pre-moved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, so... Should just be a draw. White can wait. Black can wait. And that means we're all just waiting for the next yep. set of games to begin. So, let, let's see. So the, the Tbilisi gentlemen are still leading the pack. Yep. Um, Five and a half. The Raptors had a good round. We didn't we didn't get to look at a lot of their games, unfortunately. Right. We'll, we'll pay close attention to that in the next one because they, they've creeped their way... Uh, up there in second place now behind the gentleman. Yeah, they definitely have. Um, the Estonia horses are doing well so far, and they're in the bottom two in the Eastern Division. Yep. So that is, I guess, one of the more interesting results so far. Well, a big win there, as we just saw from Jan Elvis over Alexander right. Kostinyuk, is why you right. see, like you said, the Moscow Wizards with three and, and the uh, horses with with four and a half, so, um, or one of the games. So. Okay, so this was a draw. No, no heart attacks. I think we would have no, all felt no heart really attacks. bad if that wasn't the result here. Unfortunately, maybe that there were no heart attacks. I mean, we we appreciate the drama, but all right. <laughs> if we look at the uh, look at the standings, I guess by board, not even by I would normally say by division, but this is a cross division matchup. If you are just joining us, the battle royale format. Here we mm -hmm. have teams from the eastern and central divisions going at it. Board yep. one, not a surprise, Alexander. We've got three players on one and a half out of two. Forsen, right. Meyer, and Hammer. Yep. Um, um, it's also interesting to see the only player who has a perfect score so far, Nika Volkov, the board four for the gentlemen who are leading yep. the pack. And that's a big part of it. And Nika Volkov has been one of the storylines all year. And uh, we'll probably get to know that name and that person much better as the season goes on. People making comments in the chat. Wait, he's 2100? Well, as uh, <laughs> Commissioner Greg Shahadi pointed out, he's 2100 in uh, terms of a, a classical rating, which is a big part of how these rosters are built. You try to take right. advantage and try to find those underrated diamonds in the rough, right? Yeah. Because um, Volkov is 2100, Alexandra, in FIDE Classical, but he's actually almost 2500 in FIDE Blitz. Right, which is how, which is the rating he's performing at as right. well. So what a great pick. Yeah, well, I mean, we remember, you and I remember well, last year's champions, the Armenia Eagles, who yeah. uh, just finished playing earlier today with uh, Robert Hess and David Pruis on the call. Yeah. Um, a big part of their success was also heroics by their uh, by their board four, their manager, Artak Manukian, right? And right, so, and yeah, and also uh, I remember their board one, Zavin Andriasian, he was playing bullet in the final round, and he was yep. also extremely good at bullet, so... Uh, you, you see when it gets into the tiebreakers, not just Blitz, but also Bullet becomes important. Yeah, as the games just get started, let's uh, take this brief moment to remind everybody of how they can follow the league and learn some things throughout the week. Obviously, this is the last live show of this week, but go to youtube.com slash Pro Chess League, subscribe to our channel, get instructive PCL, which is Pro Chess Lessons, right? Another fun little play on words there. David Pruis has been providing some incredible analysis, diving into some of the games that are really instructive that we don't have the time to look at. Yep. Uh, and David Pruis also has a really great YouTube channel, for those of you who don't know, that yep. I recently checked out because he's such a good instructor yep. that you guys need to check it out. <laughs> Speaking of good instructors, International Master Levy Rosman, uh, does, uh, has been also providing a lot of instructive analysis that only an IM can, along with his partner in crime there, Wouter Bick, known as Bickfoot. They've had some entertaining shows. We call it the Halfway Highlights because they're providing highlights and taking a look ahead because it's halfway through the week. Thank you, Cash Mank, for the cheer there, the bits there. Don't even know what 168 means. 168 coaching man it matters. Okay. Good coaches win. Good talk. Good talk. Yeah. Um, also, so Greg actually mentioned that last year the tiebreaker was three minutes with one second increment. I guess I was rem remembering something different from the Pro Chess League, but I stand corrected. Thank you, Greg. The uh, Again, there's going to be a million games we can look at. Remind everybody, you can just go to the chess.com live server and choose your own adventure, choose your own cheese on that pizza, whatever you want. Um, 
Just don't choose ranch to dip your pizza in. Only a uh, crazy only person have would do taste. that. Only, only a crazy person would taste. do that. Oh man! Crazy to um, miss out on it. Anyways. <laughs> uh, yep. The uh, all right. Well, Alexander, let, uh, shout it. Shout it if you see one. Obviously, we've got this game between Forsen and Hammer on the board. Um, shout out real quick. Jababa will be playing. Lexi Sexy will be taking on Maylive Twelve. That's Jan Elvis this round. And in fact, let's actually go to that one real quick because okay, this is already getting completely crazy. Jababa wow. has just played this move E five. Uh, Lexi Sexy's game with May Live 12, 212. Okay. Oh, interesting. We on Cupid, since this is still early. He's saying how Hammer was was uh, reading a lot of gifted subs. Well, that's part of being a streamer and playing in the league. It's definitely difficult. Do you think that the um, the players who are also streaming at the same time are at a disadvantage to players who are you know just have their webcam on and they're not interacting? Uh it's a great question. I mean, I, I think uh, we've actually had some behind-the-scenes storylines about that because we've been considering, do we need to worry about that? Are we, We're mm -hmm. encouraging players to stream their own view, and from a security perspective, it's kind of cool because you know, we know they're on camera, we can see what they do, but also, does it work the other way? Are they allowing their opponents to stream snipe their ideas, right? <laughs> now, the streamers know this is at their own risk, that they're, one, distracted by their chat, and two... Um, giving people insight into their thoughts, but I don't know that right. Hikaru. I don't know that Hikaru is worried about what people think about what he thinks. You know, maybe he's not. Right. So. Right. Uh, uh, I, I guess they just don't get distracted easily. So. Right. But okay, this game so, has got a yeah, lot. Yeah, this crazier. game has already had a peace sacrifice. So if you're just take a look at the live position there on the left, but let me just take you through what happened. This was another modern, but a transpo transposition to more of a Bononi with the move C4 from Jababa, uh, mm -hmm. rather than let's say something like like knight to c3 and f4, like a an, an Austrian uh, type of approach to a to a Pierce or a modern. So we had c4, and after knight f6, this four pawns attack in the King's Indian is just not something you see every day. Right. But Al Alexander, it, it kind of has like a principled reason to play it now, because against the move early knight b to d7, this is not the most typical maneuver in the King's Indian, and it makes the threat of e5 even stronger for white, because right. this knight on f6 lacks the retreating square. Yeah. Um, and, and after c5, d5, b5, so Elvis is all in on needing to justify uh, this type of structure. But, okay, I personally just believe that this type of Bononi where white is already getting e5 so quickly has to be good for Jababa. So either Elvis has something yeah. crazy up his sleeve that's like deep prep, or on honestly, I'll just go on the limb and believe that and say that I think this is going to be a miniature, and I actually think that F4 was more likely, if we go back to this position, F4 uh, was more likely to be Jababa's understanding of why this move order is potentially dubious for Black, and then and then Elvis tries to kind of tries to kind of just throw Kosh into the wind and, and, and do that, but I think that, again, this huge center is a huge advantage if Black can't do the things you normally do in these structures, which is C5 and E5 and undermine right. your opponent's space, and so... When you let them just, even though it sounds like, okay, like how are two grandmasters, they know this stuff better than we do, but this is just a very principled thing for white to do to just use the big center and just crush, crush black, just immediately breaking through with E6. Yeah, um, and, and that's exactly what he did. Um, I mean, normally you can do the four pawn attack against several lines in the King's Indian, but like you pointed out, it seems to work best against the one right. with the knight BD7. So crushing I, I, start from him. I, I think this is just, I mean... This is just over. Yeah. So Jababa, who's been kind of the, 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 the not the punchline, that would be too much, but he hasn't performed at the highest level yet for the gentleman today. He's not really even the reason why they're leading. So if he gets this one, that'll right. be redemption there. Right. Um, and at some point, we should also look at Nika Volkov's game. Maybe not yet, but like we mentioned, he does have two out of two, the only player so far with a perfect score. Yep. Um, yeah, I think this one is just over. So super exciting game. And again, I think on a principled perspective, instructive for the fans who care. If you happen to be a Kings Indian player, um, or if you happen to wonder, whoa, amazing by Jababa. That, that sounded Keanu Reeves-ish. I was like, if you happen to wonder, whoa. Oh, hang on, let me go back to the game. I was already uh, taking a peek at other games. Well, Bishop Takes E4 was played, and Jababa just castles, like doesn't even give a bleep about giving his piece back because that king on e8 is just so stuck oh um, beautiful 
I love when you could toy with your food like that. Yeah, it's, and now now he's got Bishop of four coming, and, yeah. the, and the C seven square is spied. This is. Oh man. This is gonna be the kind of game we want to keep our eye on because we may catch something just awesome. Yeah. Um, Oh man, and the Estonia horses had just gotten back in the top three by uh, beating. Him. There is no oh, peace. That's okay. Um, there is no peace, Boot. Uh, all right, let's let's keep our eye on this one. Um, let's see. As you said, Vol let's look at Volkov's game. He's mm -hmm. going up against Paul with a million sixes. No one really knows what that's about yet. We're looking into that still. He just wants to make the commentator's job a little harder, you know. Yeah. Um, I still don't even know how many sixes are in the name. Like, I'm not even going to look closely enough to find out. I think it's like there's 17. Six sixes. Yeah. Wait, no, there's five. There's, there's five. five. He there's tricked not... me. I thought Which there was... is also just a, a mind a mind trip, right? If you're going to do that many sixes, at least do six sixes. Yeah. Oh, Bishop B5 by Jabava. Look on that board. The okay, queen I'm can't bad. take I'm it because of the fork emote. Because of the fork emote. Not the fork, the fork emote. Yes. It's, it's become its own... And then he plays queen b3, and he's threatening knight g5 with discovered check to the back cave. So i got to bring the analysis back to it. He can't lose the bishop because of, oh, oh my he gosh. He just wins by resi Look at this. Yeah, okay. let's put it on the board. Bishop b5 check was played. Again, no captures for you because of Forktown. Okay? Yep. King f7 is, is the only legal move, really, if you're not going to do it. And now queen b3, and there's no way to stop the knight from moving with... Really, I think either discovered check and the queen brings the heat on f7. It's mate. Uh, so, amazing stuff. And it, it makes it makes me feel happy just that from a principled perspective, we, we kind of predicted like Mama Yara playing like Morphe earlier or the attacker today, but this was, we were right to say that this really was just a bad opening by Elvis with this knight b to d7 early move order, and, and Jobava being a guy that's played above 2750 Fide for the majority of his career. These guys know things that that other people just don't, I guess. Is that a fair thing to say? <laughs> I um, think that's a fair thing to say. And another fair thing to say is that we have another candidate for the best move of the best game of the week. Yeah, and and I think the only way to justify this position, by the way, for Elvis hindsight, not to rag too much on the Kings in it, you got to try to make E5 work here instead of C5 like he did to stop everything that mm -hmm. literally came on the board. And if you want to back up and see how Jabava uh, just crushed Elvis, um, again, I'm just, well, I'll just show you real quick. Again, just D5. The Benoni too slow when white is getting e5 so quickly, and the threat of e6 is exactly why. Just mm -hmm. amazing. Here, here Jabava so winning. He could probably keep the piece. He just gives back the piece on e4, and after castles, finishes the job with bishop b5 and queen b3. Just that right. was aw that was awesome. That's what that's what the people pay for here in the Pro Chess League. That's what the people pay for. I like yep. that saying. Speak, speaking of the people, let's give a quick shout out to the people that help all this stuff work so well. Distant fire. Chest wind at BJH13. I say at BJH13 every time. I don't know why. Um, and uh, <laughs> Siamon Sy says, of course, we saw coffee and tea in the chat earlier, the dynamic duo and, and Chess Bay. She's always there, always watching, always waiting. Um, yes, I put the Chess Bay bot emote in the chat just because it's so cute and funny. So let okay, let's let's take the action over here to one that I just spied because we have a a queen on G8 that can't be taken. Whoa. Okay, That's so awesome. the game between Bogdan Belyakov and Yura Skoberne, right? Skoberne. That's how I'm pronouncing it. So from now on, he is known as Skoberne. Skoberne. Okay, I think I think that's right. <laughs> Let's call him Skobes. 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 Great, great. Um, Skobes, Be Belyakov and Skobes are throwing down here. Um, okay, so... The... The position is not nearly as clear as it looks. Normally, when you have a pawn on f7, right? The black king's on d7. Right. It, you feel like this should be winning instantly. But okay, rookie he plays rook I way thought way rookie six check might have been the idea, um, but he doesn't go for that. Knight d4. Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, why? So why can't white castle out of this? So if castle queen side, how would black respond here? Because um, if white can just castle his king to safety, mm -hmm. and then he still has a pawn on f7, and black's king is on b7, it seems like he he is just much better. Yeah, I, I agree. I, at least from a practical point of view, right? We pointed right. out that the game isn't as clear as it first looks with the pawn on f7, but I agree that from a, from a hey, um, 
nobody wants to play with their king on d7 kind of point of view. That's fair. That's fair. I, I know. Gotta be I, good for it. They'll, they will probably find a way to make it more tricky regardless, but, you White know. White did cast along, taking your advice. Um, and, and, and I think the threat here for White is just g4, actually, and the knight on f5 is pinned to the queen right, on a5. Right, right. Yeah, so black has to take care of that. Um, yeah, it's, it's not easy. The more I look at the position, the more I'm thinking that Scoves is uh, Scoves is in trouble there. I think that's justified to say here. Um, he's in a much more difficult to play position, regardless, and it's a, a blitz game, so that makes the difference even bigger. So many other games also going. Keeping my eye on the other Ninja Turtles. Um, okay. Raphael Whoa. and Michelangelo. I see an interesting game between uh, international master Sebastian Michlov and Alejandro Diaz. So between Captain Casanova and Peronicchio. Okay. Whoa. Yeah, let's let's check out this one for a little bit here on the analysis board. I think we'll want to see what happens. So let's let's move our uh, our show over here to Mihailov versus Alejandro Diaz because um because. How did Black just get this incredibly crushing mating attack? Let's find out. Yeah, is there is there a puzzle rush here? <laughs> I, I'm thinking there's about to be a mate, but I want to quickly see what happened here because yeah, here White had a had a big center, but it was the opposite of solid. This move G5 on move uh, on move 11 was really really nice to just launch Black's attack. You know, right. I think if you go back to move 11, Alexandra, it's one of those uh -huh. positions where White almost took for granted the fact that Black could still castle long. Mm -hmm. Right. Look at the position on move eleven. I, we've all done that in games where you're, you know, you've got this huge center if you're white, and yep. you're trying to be aggressive on the light squares, and you just forgot the fact that black can castle cast long, so I can play g five here and g four and just go for a crushing attack. Right. Um, and Alejandro is also really known for these kinds of attacks. Right. We saw earlier that he played a game with g five very early yep. on, and in this position, his king is a little bit safer, like you mentioned. Well, and he, uh, but it's just well timed, and it makes me think that knight f4 was just the the sign of white making that practical error, which is a good lesson for everyone watching. I mean, you just can't right. take for granted that uh, if your opponent hasn't committed to a plan, you can't overcommit your own weaknesses either. I think this right. move castles long on move 14, just laughing at the pawn on f5 is a is a good sign of that. Yeah. And here's so. What do you he... think white should have played instead of? Um, I think knight f4 was. I mean, looking at it. I think the whole thing with knight f4 and e4 was just a mistake, just underestimating, again, the idea that happened. So I think it's as far back as moves like 10 and 11. White right. should be playing e4 just without knight f4 or even a3 and b4, something that uses the space right. advantage differently right. than than just yeah. underestimating how dangerous this could be if black castles long. Yeah, exactly. Okay, well, that was a fun fun win to see for, yeah. for black um, here. Everyone, everyone saw that checkmate on the uh, on the live board. So, all right, uh, let's go to another one that's heating up, and this is one we could probably stay on for a little bit because it's got two big names, uh, okay. Daniel Forsen and Jan Ludwig Hammer. Okay. What happened to get that pawn on f7? I must oh. find out. Yeah, let, let, let's find out what's going on there. Um, obviously, knight e6 looks like a very tempting move to make here, although black can then grab the pawn on f7, but... I want to play knight takes h7 and then drop my knight on g6 or e6 with mate. Bug house. That's right, what I right. want. Where's grace when you need Let's her? Let's just mix up the rules real quick, right? Um, I, I actually can't tell who's better here yet, right? Because hammer has a, an extra bishop or mm -hmm. a bishop for a pawn, I should say. But he's under attack, so let's see if White has anything here. Otherwise, I'd be surprised if Hammer's actually... W okay, and by the evaluation bar that I see, Hammer is winning this, but it's... It looks scary. I can never trust those things anyway because I think that the material speaks uh, bias into the computer's ear. It's like a material whisperer, right? You're right. Um, so I, I try, I try to pretend that 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 they don't know what they're talking about. Uh, but they I also, I also live in a world. I also live in a world where Harry Potter's real. So Harry Potter's real. So, chess yeah, engines don't know what they're talking about. With, uh, with a grain of magic, you right? Know? So you know, I I live in that kind of uh, innocent world. Um, Queen of five. But, you know, from a practical point of view, regardless of the jokes about uh, whether Black, whether I'm living in a fantasy world or whether Black should be winning, like, the thing is, this is harder to play as Black in a lot of ways, right? Because yeah. of 
the things you're constantly afraid of. Here I'm looking at the move rook e5 for white, but I think that I think that Hammer must be planning queen d2. Right. And uh, okay, I don't know where the the victory is for for either side here, but it. So yeah, Hammer he... is just trying to trade off queens. Obviously, White is not going to do that because then the attack is over. Hammer's winning. Although um, here, here, the, here you could 90... play ninety six and take uh -oh. d eight with check. Uh oh. Because it's if you take d eight with check, that's actually much harder for Hammer to deal See, with. I feel better about not not being convinced with a computer bar earlier on yeah. now. <laughs> well, one of the one of the concrete lines to show everybody is if Knight takes and you try to take with the Rook, there's Queen e six check followed by yeah. winning the Bishop on e seven. So there's um, all kinds of things that forcing can calculate right now. Right. I think that if you take on d8 and you... So if you take with the rook, there's queen e6. Mm -hmm. But if you take with the queen, you've lost your fret of trading queens, and there may also still be queen e6, and the attack rages on. So... Oh, wow. Forsen just plays knight g5? He's just playing tickle here. You know what he's going to do? Look at this. If Now he's going to play knight takes h7 check, I think. Or Whoa, queen he plays queen e6. six. He's just going for the mate. He just got mate. Uh, okay, black has queen c4, so it's not mate. No, or but queen then G6. no, but queen takes e7 check. I, I said it's not mate, not that. Yeah, it's yeah, not okay, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man. I, I thought I thought he was gonna go for the line of knight takes d8, but he was just gonna do it in kind of a a, a tickle way to get another pawn in the meantime. But no, he was right that there was oh, more here. I I mean. Look, if he survives and he loses the piece, that's okay because it was sacrificed. Um, but I, I don't think he was going to yeah. survive after that. No, but what you just said is, I think, really instructional, just kind of offhand for all the viewers. I think one of the ways people mess up defending these positions is they they worry about the material when they just need to worry about surviving. If you're already up a piece, it's called a defensive sacrifice. You you can look right. for opportunities to give it back to yeah. kind of calm the storm. So. Um, I think that's a great point. Although here, I still think Forsen is in a good attacking shape. Even like rookie six, just cutting off the queen to f7 and renewing right. that threat as possible. Right. R yeah, rookie six looks looks scary. Um, although maybe Black could defend after rookie six because he can then use his rook to help defend against checks. Which way though? Let's. Oh, I guess rook d7. Okay. Yeah, I think rook d7 or rook f8. I just bring the 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 rooks somewhat closer to the king or controlling the seventh ring. But again, I would not want to be black in this position. Yeah, I agree. It's just much harder to be black. I think that. Oh, does he what? really have a win here? <gasps> He's got the Venus flytrap. Wait, wait, wait. Rook wait. takes c three. It's puzzle rush. Queen takes queen e six check. King h eight. Knight f seven. King g eight. Knight h six oh, check. No. King h eight. Boom and knight f seven. He's got he's got the Venus flytrap. Wait, Hammer just played rookie one. Well, he had to, but it, I think rook takes yeah. c3 is just over. Look at this. Yeah, let's, let's show it on the board. The Venus flytrap, rook takes c3. Again, if queen takes c3, this is why you have to know your tactical patterns. This is mate. Yep. King h8, knight f7, knight h6. You sacrifice the queen no matter how the queen is taken. Knight f7 is smothered checkmate. Bananas. So smothered and Venus flytrap. I the, haven't heard it called the Venus flytrap before, but you've never that heard that. Sense. No, no, no. Yeah, this, there's no space. Well, there's, there's the smothered mate, which is kind of the, the the conclusion of the Venus flytrap with this queen g8 knight f7. But this whole little pattern with the queen check, knight check, knight h6, that whole thing is called the Venus flytrap. Okay. Well, I learned something new today, chat. I hope you did as well. There now people go. are just making up names. Is that Anastasia's mate? <laughs> no, there is an Anastasia's mate, but that's not it. But yes. Oh, um, okay. Well, I, I clearly missed all you, of that. You never, you clearly never read How to Beat Your Dad at Chess. Well, I was already doing it without the book, Danny. So. There, okay. Well, some of us needed the book. No, and uh, <laughs> no. But jokes aside, these are these aren't real. I feel like you're implying that I'm making these up, Alexandra. That's the tone I'm getting here. I only thought that because I hadn't heard them, but now I know the names of these mates. So okay. I, actually I just I just wanted you to know I make up a lot of things, but never names of mating nets. Never. <laughs> okay. Never. Harry Potter, yes, mating names. There no. you go. Is that the Botez mate? Oh, it could be super same. Well, first of all, why not? Why not? Right? You you got to figure out a way to to make up a pattern. The, the um, Botez mate is called the dirty flag, but that's fine. The dirty flag, yeah. Yep. Okay. The point is. Hammer Hammer knew the Venus flytrap was coming, and he stopped it. 
but he's still busted. Now there's threats of knight takes g7. Okay, yeah. I mean, obviously queen takes g7 is also mate that's threatened, but I think just knight takes here probably does the deed. Ooh, rook d8 also works because you can't take Wait, it due to queen takes just, g7 mate. Does he have perpetual options now that there's no rook on the first rank? Ooh, queen e1 and queen e4. You just blunder perpetual? Well, I, I'm not convinced... Is it perpetual? Because black it, white can stop. I with think F3. it is. Oh my gosh! You just blunder perpetual check in a lights out game. There you go. Holy, but there you go. I wish this wasn't a PG show, so I could say how I really feel right now. How do you really feel right now in PG words? <laughs> you'd, ha you'd have to earmuff it for me, Alexander. You'd have to earmuff it for me. I'll cough. Just kidding. If you earmuff it for me, I'll say how I really feel. Um, oh my gosh. Okay. Wow. So what's on happening here? Because the idea is queen c2 and you have the light squares. That's why. And if the king goes to g1, you can go to the dark squares on c1 and you just use the h6 c1 diagonal. So there's no there's no way out. He just freaking blundered a draw. Oh, MGzers. Well, hang on. I'm going to quickly see Hammer's reaction. Oh, he has. he's so focused. He's not even excited. I mean, knight takes g7 just... was game over. Oh, my gosh. He is focused. They drew by repetition. Oh my gosh. Or not even knight takes g7, honestly. Queen takes a7 was also just fine. Queen takes a7 winning the pawn, followed by, you go back to these ideas of the of the minion. Uh, wow, what a <laughs> save by Hammer. It is, and I agree with Greg. Hammer, no reaction is weird. After game, let's see how he's going to react. Well, I think oh. he... I think he wasn't happy with the result overall, right? So it's like when you save a draw, but you were you felt like you were better than the player to start. You don't just celebrate Maybe, as much. Maybe, but in, come on. In this uh, position, I agree with you. I, it, it, it feels odd. It feels odd. I, I agree. Um, yeah. Let's go to this game between Didici, which is which is Ladici. <gasps> okay, he's having Luka a Lynch. reaction now. He's having a reaction now, finally. Let's go to the other game. Okay. A lot of people have suspected that all Norwegians are half cyborg anyway because of how good they are at chess and how emotionless they tend to be. Well, this is this is just a theory. <laughs> this is a theory that I'm saying on camera, much to probably my regret later on. But you know, I have heard that Norwegians are half cyborg. So. I, I I think that sounds fair. And uh, hi, smarter <laughs> guys, saying hello in the chat. Sorry, smarter chess, not smarter guys. Um, so there's two games left. Yeah, two games left. One of them is a rook ending that looks like white just messed up, and somehow Luka Lenich might almost be holding. Now he can take with check and get d4. What in the world is he doing? Whoa. Okay, yeah, rook g3. When you, when he you plays king g3. Why not play rook g2? And it, this is a draw now. You got to know your rook endings, people. The king is too close. Oh man. Well, yeah, the, he's, he was. He's trying to keep the king. Um, but there's a number. With of, the, rook, the king but... is. The king is too close. Regardless, you can even check and then come behind and just bring the king up. This is. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, exactly. You, this is a theoretical draw, and the reason you have to know that is this king has to be all the way cut to the bishop file to ever win these rook endings with just an h pawn. Because maybe right. we'll have an opportunity to show it. We'll try to. The instructive. Yeah, I think, I think they're they're going to be able to show yeah, on. Now the, board. the king goes there and it's over. So. I'll try to back up and show everybody why, but if the king is cut to the bishop file, the rook has time to leave the king, get in, and cut off. In this mm -hmm. case, as you see, the, the rook is trying to cut off the other rook, but this king is already so close that he's he's in shape, he's in good shape to guard the pawn. So there's right. just no way to win this. You have to have the king cut so far that you have time to do what Lenich is trying to do, but the king only gets as far to the e-file, which in this case would allow white to move the king out and win. Yeah. So I'm quickly providing some summary that I know there are some details there, but for everybody wondering how to learn from this game, rook endings with an extra h pawn are not winning unless the enemy king is cut off all the way to the bishop file. That's the that's the pro tip to just know. Um, that's that's a good pro tip, um, and a great way to practice those end games is to keep shifting the pawn on different files and see mm -hmm. what that changes, and then you start recognizing the patterns. Yep. Um, wow. First Whoa, of all, Ledici just like, this was an easily winning endgame, and he just completely messed it up. And again, it's why you have to, I'm just surprised, an international master, I mean, he know, he should know this, either he just miscalculated. Time pressure, six seconds, you know? Yeah. But you, um, it's, it's another reason why, also from a practical perspective, you mentioned practicing it, Alexander, and I think it's one of the things yeah. that gets underestimated is people look at an endgame in the book, and they're like, okay, now I know the answer, this is a draw, right? But do you do, but do but you know it where you can draw it with no time on the clock, right? That's yeah. the, there's yes. knowing it, 
and then there's like the master of it where it's just like so intuitive that you, you could exactly. you couldn't mess it up if you tried yeah the way my coach used to put it as a kid it's a little more aggressive but you like if i wake you up in the middle of the night with a bat and you only survive do you know it and i was like right i hope so that and sounds then... abusive do you want to talk about that that sounds like it was a little weird <laughs> no, I, I don't mean, know why maybe... he would Eastern Europeans just like to make sure you're scared, right? Right. It's the same fear as having five seconds. Right. Um, and it's yeah. a hypothetical. The KGB so could knock on the door any moment. You yeah. Know, so yeah. I I understand that. Um, the. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> no, but also Alexandra Kostinyuk won her game. She did. That was that was a big win over George Meyer. Whoa. Um, but look, I guess we can, we can wait this one. Okay, so they just drew the game. Um. They did draw the game. We had a semi-instructive moment before things got weird, and that was, in <laughs> fact, the last one in the book. I'll, I'll run through on the analysis board to show you. As as uh, said, Chess Queen took down Georg Meyer. That was the final position. Uh, we had uh, Unuk, um, I believe, take down. I don't even know whose username is what. Um, somebody won this game, so good talk. Sergey Gregorians <laughs> um, indeed won his game. But if we look at the standings, I guess that's the fastest way to know exactly what all the results were. We can see that uh, Forsen drew his game versus Hammer, a disappointing result. Um, but Meyer falling to Alexander Kostinyuk, maybe maybe one of the biggest results that comes back to bite the snowballs. I mean, that's a game that Meyer right. is definitely supposed to win, and that helps the Wizards um, maintain maintain pace right now with the Barcelona Raptors. Yeah, yeah. Um... And wait, the Phoenix are Phoenix are. In have eight and the gentlemen have nine what in the world's going the on Phoenix here have eight wait a second i thought the phoenix yeah they're they're on the last seed right now in the eastern division i just i just checked um okay well good result for them so far also yep. nika volkov won again three out of three he is crushed i feel like he's just gonna crush all of the board fours yeah, he's he's clearly even better in this setting, Alexander. Where obviously, okay, he doesn't have to play the the higher rated players. He gets to play only players within his rating group. But secondly, right. the the rapid time control, right? The, uh, it's yeah. always rapid, but the even faster time control of the battle royale format. Yeah. Just well, makes I, it... I do have a question for you. Yeah. Um, do you think at some point you guys should take into consideration rapid ratings, right? Because if he's performing twenty five hundred and that's his rapid strength versus classical. How fair is that, you know? I mean, it, it is fair because everybody has the same rules and they can pick their players, but just curious what your thoughts are. Okay, first of all, I plead the fifth in all controversial decisions. They belong <laughs> in Greg Shahadi's plate. Yeah, and, sorry, uh, that's, I just realized I put you into like a difficult question. As long as he's the commissioner, he has to make decisions like this. But I will answer with something that is maybe a slight preview for the future. I'll put it this way. We have talked a lot about this, and the ultimate solution may be not any other rating that isn't a pro chess league rating, for example, or right. a, a rating that we have uh, worked on. Something You can't just pull the trigger and say you have new ratings when ratings have been established, right? But if we continue yeah. to do the pro chess league for years, I don't think it's outside the realm of the possibility that it's easier for us to apply um, some sort of unique way to measure a player's strength, but in, in particular... Uh, pro chess league format, right? The format itself right. is unique. Yes, it's it's rapid, right. and you can play rapid anywhere. But, but I think you could argue that the online setting, the team setting, the rapid time control that that also changes in a couple different times throughout the season. There's a lot of things that make the format of the PCL unique when comparing to rapid and blitz anyway. Let alone classical. And I think it's I think it might be something that we try to do at some point down the road. So we'll see. We're, we've talked about that some. So, okay, very cool, very cool. The. Uh, yeah, smarter Chester says yeah because he knows that that's a project that may end up landing on his plate at some point. Anyway, oh, Matt, nice. get get nice. to work on that. But we'll get to work on the <laughs> schedule here. Let's remind you, everybody, while we have a brief pause in the action, that we are covering uh, the first battle royale event, um, and that's uh, that's exactly what's going on here on February first. But mark your calendars if you don't have uh, don't have every one of these days mapped out already. That you're spending all of your time with us, then that is a you problem. And uh, we hope that you address that and make that change. Yep. So, games are underway. We're back. Games are underway. Okay, exciting. Um, let's see. Game. Are, are there any games you're excited for? I want to. Hmm. Which ones am I excited for? 
Yeah, look, I want to see if the Tbilisi gentlemen are still uh, just crushing crushing the field so far. Anything you're excited to see? I'm excited to see the chat. So many amazing people. Sorry, I was completely not focused right there. No, hashtag, that's good. That hashtag is the you most caught exciting me. part of this event, so you answered the question correctly. There's, <laughs> the most ex Was the exciting part that I'm not paying attention? That's the most exciting part? I don't know. Yeah, that means I get to lead the show. What's up, chat? Yes, oh, yes. This is about that show. Just Your kidding. opportunity okay. to talk bad about me. I'm hardly paying attention. Um, I can't believe I have to do commentary with someone who believes in magic. I know, right? The things I put up with for chess, man. It would almost be as bad as someone who dips their pizza in ranch. Uh, no, that's a plus. Just saying. All right. <laughs> so. All right. No kidding. All right. We've got um, we've got a whole lot of games at it once again. Of course, you can see the game between Ladva and Diamant on, on screen. I'm 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 creeping here, creeping and peeking at all these other games. I don't even know where to go. Um. Yeah, I'm trying to see one that is a little further ahead since it's so early, but... Let's check know. out this one one game that's just particularly odd and, and therefore maybe something instructive we can provide. Let's go to this game between Kolars and Kobo, which is Poor Little Greenie versus De International Master Dimitri. Okay. Because there's, there's a pawn on E6, there's and I pawn. wonder how it got there. Yep. There's a nice pawn chain preparing, even though yep. white can't has to be a little careful with b3 because of the long diagonal that the bishop on g7 is looking at. Yep. Huh. I mean, it looks nice, but also black's knight should be able to maneuver around it, although it's not that easy. Okay. Huh. Am I just taking the side that has more space again? I think it's always the, the easy choice. But how is white going to castle here? White can't castle right away because the queen is blocking off the king. He can potentially con continue with Play bishop, bishop three, three, but his bishop wants to get on the long diagonal at some point. <laughs> Sorry, Arn is killing me right now. He's he's typing things that I can't read on air. You're being inappropriate. But let's give a shout-out to Arn real quick. I can't uh, read those things. I Studio C. Arne. Studio C. We love that guy. Woo! <laughs> so um, much bromance going on. You guys should have seen it before. Hey, come time. back here. <laughs> Aaron's out of here. Uh, wouldn't it be funny if you just, just walk out one day and just don't come back and it just gets real <laughs> awkward? Um, <laughs> You're complimenting him easily. Are you flexing on screen again? Yeah. I have. Okay. I I had to. I had to flex because he's strong. It's not about me. This is about him. You're right. Um, You're right. Here, I'll use my chess bra. Subscription with my chess.com subscription on Twitch, and I can show muscles and Orin's face. Okay, I'm just going to get back to the show, so I'll just do that. Good job. All right. Um, okay, so he did continue with bishop e3 so that yep. he can try and castle here. Um, Black, Black has to do something. His queen is under attack. He has a couple options. Play, I mean, queen a5 looks like the first move just because checks are fun. Queen c7. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to have to really pull it together. Fragrant Socks uh, 007 said, why is Carwana hiding under the desk in the, uh, <laughs> in the chess TV chat? Um, You're going to have to answer that, Danny. I, 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 interesting PR question. It is an interesting PR. We, we, we change position of them all the time, which is also just weird in our own way. It's like we're playing with like little toy figures or Legos or something. <laughs> it's like We're like, Hikaru just doesn't look happy in that corner. Like, Let's put him over here. You oh, know. Man. Anyway, yeah, for, for people who do, who have not seen that they're not real people, it does sound a little weird. But hey, yeah, it does. Okay. Um, this is an exciting game. Uh, bringing it back because this is the king on f two combined with white's completely dominant pawn chain on the light squares. So the balance here, I guess, let's let's get instructive here is whether black can complete development despite what these pawns have have done to the knight. Right, you've got this huge mm -hmm. center which is restricting the knight. Okay, if the knight can't get out, then you're also restricting development of the rooks. And if black can't get anything quickly to get the pieces developed, I mean, I believe white's plan is probably just to rush the h-pawn, h4, h5. You've kept the king on f2, which means you have this ability to to kind of play on both sides of the board. The, the other idea, okay, like a3 and b4, right? So if we're just kind of saying that uh, white has options on both sides of the board that black doesn't have, the risk is, of course, that the king is in the center, and if these pawns get undermined... Um, that'll come back to bite it. But I, I like white, and maybe this is a a bias toward crazy chess, but I also look at the three-minute time advantage on the clock, and it just kind of tells me that 
that uh, that Kolar's kind of has maybe a better feel for the position. That fair to say? Yeah, um, and I mean, White White looks pretty good. He's not really in any trouble here with his king on f two. He has more yep. space. I I think that's fair. All right, well, f five is played. I like that. That was your idea from earlier. Open up the bishop. Try to there do we something. Go. Finally doing that. Um, so looking towards the b2 pawn, which he could he could defend pretty easily if he wants to by putting a rook on b1. Um, but, but and I was gonna but say he doesn't, he, have I thought, to. he doesn't have to. I was gonna say he, now we're completing each other's. <laughs> it's about time. It's about it's, time. It's, uh, you didn't. You, you left me hanging. Anyway, why you could even play a3 in the point? Oh, is, we're completing each other. I was supposed to sandwiches, say sandwiches. Sandwiches. Yeah. Sandwiches. Bishop oh, takes. Yeah. Rook, you could even go for something like this because getting a rook on the seventh rank with this mm -hmm. huge center would be. I think white is just close to winning here. Super dominant position. The knight on b8 is undeveloped, and so. Um, I think you were right to say that uh, it is easy to defend, but maybe not even necessary to defend um, right. if you're white. So, okay, a unique one that uh, maybe will lead to, to an exciting finish. Okay. I also want to jump over to this uh, this game between... Okay, well, there's several, but I, I want to go to the Bador Jabava game, if that's okay. Lexi Sexy at it again. Of course. Okay, against D. Forsen. I mean, that, game, that name is so much fun to say. Okay. D. Forsen. So, there's a pawn on h4, a queen looking towards his king, and uh, weak dark squares. That's what I like to see when I click yep. onto a game and look yep. at it for two seconds. It's a good sign. Me too. And, uh, in fact, this looks like some sort of Bodvinic win in an isolated queen pawn. Where So, I say that because one of the things about an isolated queen pawn is that Uncle Yermo, my my, uh, he would say he's a Soviet, not a Russian. That's what Uncle Yermo would say. The Soviet okay. chess school would tell you the best isolated queen pawn is one that has little to no defense. That means it's still on the board, but you're not worried about it because you've managed to right. create so much counterplay, right? Read between the lines. And the point is, White's knights on the big center squares, the rook on this e-file, and the threats that that's allowing White to focus on on the king side. I mean, look at where's the pressure on d4 by black, right? The bishop isn't yeah. doing much. So, again, it's objectively probably still kind of close to equal. If if Black can find a way to get minor pieces traded here, then mm -hmm. Black is probably fine. But this is exactly the sort of isolated queen pawn position you you dream about when you can short of short of let's say add a dark square bishop for White, right? If you add that dark square yeah. bishop back, okay, now it's even better. But overall, um, this is this is the the good the good way to play an isolated queen pawn position as White. Yep, and. I, I don't know how Black is going to try to get out of it. I was trying to think of moves for Black here. I think, I don't I think like... you should maybe play Knight F6, I'm wondering. Knight F6? Okay, yeah. And so Knight F6, he's trying to trade off. Um, Knight takes F6. Ooh, F6. Wait a second. But then isn't the Rook on C7 hanging? I feel like there might be some scary tactics. Yeah, it's a good point. In fact, Knight G4 threatens that. Alexandra's point is that if F5, Knight DF, sorry, Knight EF6, a big trade, and in the end... White picks up material. That's uh, you've been doing your puzzle rush, huh? I have been actually. It's a little Shoot. addicting, so. She's <laughs> spotting that tactic. Um, um, but it's so... it's also easier when you could play it out on the board. So I'm not gonna lie there. So, but I think I think Forsen will move the rook from c7. Whether that's just to d7. I mean, c2 is a square, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and he goes for it. Yeah, I actually was nervous so... about bringing the rook to a vulnerable. That's that's not Karpovian to put your piece on a square like that that could be loose to tactics because, okay, Karpov would say, look at g6, which hits the king and the rook on c2, and he's just like, ah, right? That's too right. too much too much potential awkwardness for this guy. But but computers, computers play chess in a way now that has influenced the generation so much. I mean, they just play much more accurate, aggressive moves because the, the mindset now is if I don't see the concrete win... I have to play this move. Whereas I think the mindset of like traditional, or not, I don't want to say traditional, but a guy like Karpov was very, he always wanted to create a scenario where it was a blunder-free situation. Everybody was protected. The plan was strategically right. so sound, right? It's just a different type of mindset in, in the computer generation versus uh, classical chess players. Exactly. I don't, I don't remember who said the quote, but it was something about taking your opponent to a dark part of the forest that nobody knows the way out. Right. And that really reminds me of like computer tricks. Like, wait, how, what is this? Right. Um, but I, I, F6 just looks so wrong because this king is already so weak. Um, I, I use the, um, 
Benjamin Feingold never push F60 mode. I know it doesn't technically apply here, but I feel yeah. like something bad's coming. Yeah, could be. Fragrant socks 007. We did analyze F5 in Chess TV. We pointed out if F5, Knight F6, again, the fork wins material for white at the end. So we, we did indeed analyze that for you, buddy. Um, <laughs> for you, buddy. Oh, I like it. Buddy. You was, that a can was that a Canadian buddy? Yeah, I mean, you use buddy properly. It's never a compliment, but it's not right. too jarring. So right. I, 10 out of 10 buddy usage. That's, yeah. Most of Canadian humor is about degrading people subtly enough that they can't be offended, right? Yes, just, yeah. Just barely exactly. enough. You're constantly putting people down just enough that they can't really get offended. You it's got like, it. You got wait, it. do Canadians all think they're better than us? But he didn't. He wasn't being mean, was he? No, I, I he just was said being buddy. Nice. I just said buddy. I don't know what you you're just said. Buddy, about. exactly. Yeah. Um, all right, <laughs> I, I, I agree with you. And 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 H five is uh, is played yeah. with the idea of opening up a double attack. And this this could be a lot of fun if there was some sort of check. Actually, there is a there would be a force mate in a situation like that. So, all right. Okay. I'm I'm with you that Jobava's got a good attack. We talked about the isolated queen pawn instructive angle of this, and we've even mentioned Karpov. Oh, we're done here. Can I drop the mic and walk out? That's a yeah, complete I, I pro think chess league game. We're done. All the chess education. That's for it. The next week. Yeah. Um, okay. Um. Let's see. Do we want to hang hang around here? Or is there I, any other game we want to see? After what Jobava did in the last one with queen b3, let's keep this one on the live board if that's possible, and on the yeah. main, and let's move through some others. Let's um, I'm gonna show one game that's in the books because it ended with a crazy mate. Just uh, this was the game between Vastrukin versus Unuk, and again, unfortunately, a tough loss for the the Turtles and a big win for the Wizards. Oh no, has she lost all the I think games? She's so lost far? every game. Yeah, but this that's was a really tough to get out of. You start very seriously tilting and just look how quickly this oh, one finished there. And this is this is why. Even if the queens are off the board, you can't assume you won't get checkmated. After c4, she just completely underestimates how dangerous the g-file is that's coming here. I mean, you have to you have to bring back the rook uh, to a square that can defend. Um, this is You may even have to sacrifice the exchange if it turns out bishop f6 is that forcing. But after c4, right. white just took f6 and did every natural move in the book, and it was just mate, check, bring the rook up, bring the other rook over. Yeah. And... Uh, and game over, right? Check me yeah. on H8. Um, so. I'm just taking... I mean, she's been playing well in the league. She has three out of eight. She's performing almost 2,400. So she's just having a bad bad day today. So I, yeah. I'm sorry to yeah, hear not, that. Yeah, not her best day yeah, today. Just, just so you guys know, she has been playing very well. Um, well, we'll keep we'll keep the uh, main board, as we said, Andre Bob and Forsen. Let's move now over to Georg Meyer. Okay. Versus Jan Elvist. All um, right. What's going on here? Well, I like that George Meyer is attacking again. Of course, I'm I'm sure he's not going for a mate and he's going for some strategic advantage, but it's it's nice to see. And he played the French exchange. So, Classic. you know, well, he when, didn't when you get play a French, the French exchange. exchange. No, Elvis. he did. He, poor yeah. George Meyer had to reply to the French exchange, and I think we should petition banning uh, Jan Elvis from, from the league for forcing him into this opening. Yeah, I mean, when someone plays the French and you play the French exchange, like, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna avoid the, completing person, what's, what's going Don't on in my head. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so what do you think here? What are your thoughts? Um, I think Meyer's position is totally fine as black, as as you said. I mean, Elvis didn't try for a lot with the French exchange. If we back up and show you how we got here, I'll just run through the moves. That's what mm -hmm. we're talking about in terms of the French exchange, and it's just. It's a symmetrical structure without a ton of dynamic potential. Um, but because it also relieves Black's duties, I guess, in terms of where Black is normally trying to equalize still, um, yeah. it allows Meyer to be aggressive with lines like you're seeing he played with the G5, control over the E-file. One thing that's deceptively dangerous about, we'll call it symmetrical positions like the French exchange, as we're seeing here, is that because it seems so, uh, because it seems so tame, you underestimate that in a position that's totally symmetrical, if one player starts to get a huge advantage on just anything, it can it can just snowball. It's not like, say, a dragon where even if you're down in the attack, you're both still attacking on totally sides of the different sides of the board. You can outcalculate them, you can trick them, or a Nimzo Indian with the bishop paired dynamic versus double pawns. Like here, if black gets the E file and white doesn't get anything to go with it, the game could just be over very, very quickly. Um so that's one thing to just keep in mind. I'm not saying that I'm not 
saying that this position is going to end in fireworks. I'm just trying to maybe do what I do as a commentator, add a little which, bit of life where there isn't which much I, life. Which I like it. You're hyping it up. And as I'm far as it. French exchanges go, this is definitely a more interesting line. Um, speaking, of, speaking of hype, look at that. Look at that. how that Jabava game is going. Look how quickly. I mean... Oh, my God. Whoa. He's just, he's just a monster when he gets going in rapid chess, which is why I kept saying so yeah. surprised oh, I that... I love that move. Knight f7. He can't play rook h8. He's going for queen h6. Um... So we, we left right here on H5, Alexander. Yeah, he's starting mate in two. Okay. I'm just yeah. going to... Yeah, no, it's about to be over. Everyone can see the live game. In fact, indeed, the resignation has happened. But here's yeah. what here's where we left it. The rook was on C2. Alexander was proven right about the don't move the F6 pawn. Because after H5, takes G6, and then knight H6. Yeah. I mean, the game was, was already almost over. Yeah. I, I know that uh, Grandmaster Hammer always says respect your bishops, but I think Jobava here is respecting his knights, and this is a very nice example. I think I'm just going to clip it and send it to Hammer with yeah. respect your knights. Right. Thank you, thank you, Chess Bay, for the love there. We appreciate it. Thanks you to everybody who's here, all of our subscribers, all the cheers and bits. We don't always have the the uh, the normal shouting out of everybody and all their support during these big events where there's so much action to cover. Not not the everyday Twitch stream, but just want you but to know we that we should, see it we all. Should, they we should, we should, so and we, 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 we appreciate it. Um, and this was just crazy chess by Jababa. Maybe that's why Chess Bay cheered, because she just loved the mate so much. I don't know. Um, <coughs> but uh, it was instructive. If you actually saw our analysis of this whole game, just when we first came to it, you could just see that we were... You know, we were we were in love with White's chances with the two minor pieces and an IQP, uh, which is isolated queen pawn in Italian, and um, and and White just did work here with the attack. So this is a really good lesson of how dangerous these positions can be when Black doesn't get any pressure against this potential weakness. I'll yeah. leave one lesson. I know I'm going into way too teacher mode here, Alexander. And there's no, other that, games. No, that's the best. The best. I mode. want to point out one other thing that I think this is for our slightly more advanced uh, viewers. Often we think of one principle against an isolated queen pawn as blockade it, which is good. You want to put pieces on those squares in front of it. But but w as the pieces come off, or let's say as the focus shifts to one side of the board, blockading it isn't enough if white has all the pay time in the world to just attack. So really where this knight belonged, Alexandra, was not d5, mm -hmm. but f5. f5 would have been the square where instead of things like rook c2, if maybe if black tries to move the queen and reroute the knight from e7 to f5, Right. That that was really the way Black could have held this position was trying to get a situation where a knight could keep that bishop open and put some pressure on the deep pawn rather than just sitting tight while White just smashed through over here. So, yeah. Um. Anyway, just wanted to say that. All right. So where are we going now? What do you, What do you want? So many games. Uh, I there was one game, but I think it was it's about to end. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think this game is almost over. I was looking at the game between Grandmaster Milis Kanep and Woman GM Hannah Click. But it looks like she's she's about to beat him actually, which is a good good upset anyway. So we could take a quick look at it. Well, let, let's. There's so many games under time pressure. Let, let's jump okay, to this yeah, one between Le, Leonardo and Karanki because because there's a king on d6, and I'm like, what the? Okay. Bleep? Um. Ooh, he's uh, trying to develop his king a little early. Yeah. We know we like active kings in the end but, game, but, but black wait. is also up a rook. Yeah, yeah that's right? true. Uh, he is wait. up a rook. Yeah. That that's a fair point, but I think he's gonna lose it, right? I, Hang on, what I, I think so. I I have no idea. I'm looking at this position and it's Never completely did. unclear to me. Black is up a rook and a minor, but white has a huge attack and a whole lot of pawns. Um, this is why they pay some people the big bucks to commentate on chess. Not this guy. I don't have any. I'm not gonna analyze this. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, let's leave it at a complicated. The way yeah, I exactly. Do I'll pull in a nod and say this is just an unclear, unclear. Um, right. I mean, um, yeah. When when you're, I, I see your eval bar on on the screen, and when it shows that it's better for white and black is up a rook here, you know something crazy. Right, and you don't see a mate. I have no idea yeah. where the mate is, if and yeah. how and when. Um. I, I will say that white does have that pawn on e6, so potentially he ha black is going to have to sack a piece to stop it, and white's king is a lot more safe. So we do notice these things, but I think it could be anybody's game. So. Kings, okay, so now there's a knight coming to d5. Oh, that was a... Ooh. Okay, he, he has queen e1, but the issue is after he takes and bishop takes, there's still knight d5, is there not? Or Okay, knight d5 or queen f7, both are on, on the table. 
Right. Um, um, so so what Black... Black at least has somewhere he can try to run with his king to b8. It looks a little bit more safe. He's not in the center of the board anymore, which is great news for him. Yeah. Uh, white one... isn't under serious attack yet. And, but but White's the one under under more serious time pressure. Oh, nice yeah. move. Rook c3 is met by queen takes c3 and then knight d5. Uh, fork nice. emote. Fork emote. Emote, not a fork. Yep. Or or even just the fork emote right away with knight d5. Yeah, indeed. Uh, indeed. Uh, Scobes agrees. Scobernay. Actually, okay. I love that idea because now you keep the queens on the board, assuming you take with the knight. Let Black take back on e6 and then. This is still harder to How be did black. This, yeah, this uh, this game simplified very quickly. But I, I think it's still hard to be black, even if black is in less ch chance to get mated, because the open king, whereas... So w here, white can push, like, the H-pawn mm -hmm. aggressively and freely and not open up any new issues to think about under time pressure with a king. Whereas right. every time black... Okay, now he just blunders the pawn. I was going to say, any time black moved the pawn, he would have opened up his king even more, and... Indeed, a yeah. move like a move like b5 shows you why, right? b5 allowed this move queen d3. So, again, computers can play these positions with equality for both sides, but human beings, you would much prefer to be white when you can now rush and do aggressive things without even worrying about counterplay, whereas black right. can't do the same with the open king. Especially now that white took black's only pawn off the yep. board as well. Black yep. just holds all the ropes here, so... That, that's a a much needed win for the turtles. Hopefully, they yep. can get off of the the last rank on this battle royale. Well, let's let's keep let's keep uh, this one on view. But I'm also going to move over to Hammer's game versus Ladici, mm -hmm. um, because here Hammer is better up a pawn is white, but I'm wondering if it's going to be enough to win. That bishop has found this very very instructive and nice defensive diagonal. Right. Um, um, Actually, I, I don't see and how... And he, he can't take on h4 yet, because then white will be able to take back on f5. Um, okay, but so th Hammer's this is also a sign here that if, if Hammer does that, I think he knew he knew he didn't have a chance to win, because now right. the bishop can just sit tight on b1, h7, and there shouldn't yeah. be a way... There shouldn't ever be a way to advance that pawn without the bishop sacrificing right. for, the, for the pawn. Right. It's just too easy for the the bishop to swing, swing on any really diagonal. b1 yep. to h7... Or H1 to A8. There's... The only way you have chances in these kind of endgames is, as you just implied uh, without saying it, is that you have to have a shorter diagonal where the bishop has less squares, less opportunities for yeah. safety. But here there's just, I mean, just there's way too many squares that the bishop could be on that there would never be a fork. Um, although this, is, this was not the best move. You don't want to bring the king closer. There's no need. The bishop is drawing the game. So what you want to do in these games is just bring the king around where you're never in range of any kind of fork. I, honestly, I feel like black is getting closer to losing this game with every step he brings the king close to the pawn. And I know, I know objectively there should still be a draw, but this is a lesson for everybody at home that it's kind of like in a queen and pawn ending where you get afraid of... If you're the one trying to draw, but you still are afraid of opening your own king, and you forget, like, hey, a perpetual is fine for me. Right. And this game, this guy has an idea, Ladici thinking, oh, I need to get my king closer, but it's actually completely wrong. And, it, and it, it may still end up being a draw, but all he did was just put the king and bishop close enough to be forked. Um, which would lead to a winning king upon ending. Again, if the king is all the way over here and the bishop's over here, mm -hmm. there's, there's nothing to it. It's just a draw. Yeah. So... I mean, don't be surprised if we see a crazy swindle here where Hammer figures out a way to do a fork. Here's the first threat. Uh, I will say there's also one more game that is really interesting between Andre Diamant and uh, Grandmaster Aladva just because... Yeah. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll go to that one. We'll leave this one for Hammer to trick if indeed he finds a way. Now he's threatening Knight G3. Okay. Yeah, I just... Okay, should still be a draw again, but it's just whether he whether Black blunders into a fork. Right. All right. Over but I, 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 I do like Hammer's technique a lot for the speed, trying to trick his opponent any way he can. Yep. Scobes, um, Scobes also over there on the left. I know you guys have been watching that. He's still trying to beat uh, Selaverstoff, and I think he will. Um, but... Actually, maybe Scobernay just blundered with this. Needs to play King H5 now. Try to get out. No? Okay. Um, all right, but what's going on with oh. Ladva and Diamond? This is this is the one you brought our attention to. 
Yeah, I mean, this one was a pretty fascinating game. Black is up in exchange. Um, but, but, but who's both, getting mated, right? Yeah, who's getting mated, and why do both players have 10 seconds? Um, who's on first, what's on second, right? All right, yeah. looks like Scoburne is finally going to finish the job over there. Um, yep, yep, finally converting that. Okay, that's good. And I'm guessing Hammer's... Yeah, Hammer's game, game did indeed eventually end in a draw. He was unable to get anything, which means we're left with this one final game. Diamant down on the clock. Oop, now it's mate. Take on e7. Oh, it's... man. I th Wow. Well, this was definitely a win because of the time pressure. Otherwise, yeah. Black would have been able to defend it. Um, Though there's let's... still opportunities to blunder here, I guess, if you're Always, Lodva. Yeah. Always yeah. opportunities to blunder. Yep. Or, you know, accidentally promote to queen instead of a knight, mouse lip, Wi-Fi. It, it's fun. It's fun. I don't, it know. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, yeah, nope. The, uh, yeah, the the opportunity is always there. Black has no checks. That's the, oh, h5 threatens this move, queen g4 check. So Whoa. He's, he's trying for one last trick. I mean, he, does it, isn't he going to have yeah, a discovery? It doesn't it? matter, right? Yeah. It... It's always sad when even your tricks aren't good enough. Right. Okay, now queen h6 is made. All right. Nice game. The uh, the next round is in the books, and therefore we have an update on who's leading the way right now. Uh, Jan Ludwig Hammer, Bador Jabava, and Luka Lenich all sitting at two and a half points there for the board one. So good for them. Mikhail Demidov with three points in the board two division, along with Levon Pizzulia. Wow. Um, very solid board two and board three for uh, the Moscow Phoenix team. Yep. And uh, Volkov won again. So, I mean, I don't even know that there's much else to highlight for the Tbilisi gentleman uh, nope. other than the fact that uh, Volkov rolling. continues to be He's on a tear. Rolling. Before we check out the standings, before we went in today, look at the board. Look at the group two right there. So to show everybody again what the Battle Royale is all about, you have the Tbilisi gentleman with 13 points right now kind of cruising their way to a victory today. How will that shake up the standings? Let's let's dive in and see what will happen in the Eastern and Central Division. So the gentlemen we're leading heading into today, all they would be doing would be increasing on that lead. We know that the Armenian Eagles did not did not actually win the Battle Royale um, that took place earlier today. The Mumbai Movers did. Um, mm -hmm. But the uh, the Gnomes and the Snowballs and the Raptors, I mean, that that is a super close Central Division the yeah. top three teams separated by by very few points, right? Seven points total, really, or I guess closer to nine or ten points. But, I mean, it's anything could happen at the end of today with a huge shakeup. We could have new leaders in, in both the Eastern and Central, but especially the Central. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, because, yeah, like you said, the Tbilisi gentlemen are probably still going to be leading at the end of this. So I'm curious Looks how the scoreboard will look for the Central Division after this. Oof. Shout out to everybody in the Twitch chat. I don't think we're being rude. Are we being rude to each other, Max? I hope not. I, I saw don't... that and I felt a little sad. No, I no, I, I, I don't think so. I mean, I'm probably I'm being sorry. rude. To, you know, just my mere presence is rude. But all right, um, the uh, the Pro Chess League rages on. The chat continues. Shout out to everybody. Hey, Chess Bay, what's up, Smarter Chess? Yeah, I think that the future in regards to how we continue to use this format to, to maybe come up with our own unique way to provide an online chess rating. Not that we don't already have online chess ratings on chess.com, but something specifically as it relates to this type of format. I mean, it's an interesting idea. Right. So, um, Well, I, I'm sure as the, the pro chess league keeps evolving, we'll see things like that getting yep. better each year. So we have uh, we'll Grandmaster Blue Wizard, who is Denny's Boros, saying, "Wow, the Windmills are the new leaders of the Atlantic Division." Wink, meaning obviously he knows that he plays for the Windmills. Shout out to you, uh, Boros, for uh, first of all, you should follow Denny's Boros on Twitter. Great follow, super active Grandmaster, uh, but also he's uh, competing for the Windmills and certainly has has rooting interest there. So congratulations on a huge performance for you guys uh, on Tuesday. Uh, or wait, yeah, that was on Tuesday. Yeah. Yep. I, uh, Eric Rosen also in the chat. Good to see you guys. David still watching and being yep. a pro commentator. Okay, this is good. This is a, a fun time to be watching. Yep. And there's almost 2,500 people as well. We hope you guys are enjoying. If you haven't said hello yet, 
you should, you know, so we start recognizing you guys. Yeah, say Welcome hey and chat, right? Yeah. Don't be shy. Aw, his baby Don't is be... watching as well. That's so cute. I remember last year I interviewed uh, David Proust, and he was he was holding his baby. At the, the baby was time. brand new then. I know. Yeah. They, uh, they, they, you know, you got to get those babies on Chess TV early. Watching, <laughs> watching Chess TV, get them hooked. Um, we've got this Speaking game. Speaking as a dad as well, so it means more. That's right. We've got this game uh, between uh, Jan Elvist and Daniel Forsen on the on the main board. As you can see, there could be an interesting one with this early trade of the dark square bishop for the knight on c3. For those of you who think, wait, is this a horrible blunder? Doesn't white just own the dark squares? This is actually a very common positional um, imbalance that can happen in a uh, in this type of... I guess it's a ready, I want to say accelerated drag. It's a, it's a weird kind of position, but basically yeah. black never intends to castle. Black wants right. to bring the heat against these weak C pawns, exactly as you see Elvis doing now. And White's saying, all right, well, I understand that you don't want to castle and you're, you're, you've got some targets, but the long-term potential here favors me because I've got the two bishops. Mm -hmm. I have the dark squares. And uh, dynamic dynamic chances favor me as the tactics and the board eventually opens up in all games. You know, So this is kind of the, this is the philosophical struggle here between White and Black's position. Right, right. Um, I have actually played positions like this from White's perspective a couple of times, and what ended up happening in the games I lost was I just dropped one of those hanging C pawns, and the bishops uh -huh. were just not enough. So I'm excited to take some notes from uh, Mr. Forsen to see yeah. how see how he does it, like, or you yeah. may be taking notes from Elvis because Elvis knows himself around a, a positional grind. Yeah, and this move knight at d7 coming into c5. Um, he also is going to play f6 and just put the king on f7. As I said, black has no intention to castle here. He'll castle by hand, if you will, and never allow these dark squares to become a feature of, of black being checkmated. So, um, yeah. Elvis, I mean, we, we talked about Jabava crushing him, and unfortunately that wasn't good for him. But Elvis is also a former world number three. Those of you who don't know, in the late 80s, Elvis was, right? Elvis, well, Elvis, was Elvis the hadn't team, left right? the building yet back in the Aww. late 80s. Write that down. Elvis hadn't left the building yet. He shakes his head over there. You saw it coming. I, I did. I did. Yeah. Our, I see Aron, too. He's looking yeah. down. And uh, Elvis had not left the building yet. He was still one of the top ten players in the world. And and here comes F6. This is the kind of position where what I wanted to say with the game with Jabava is Jabava crushed him with that opening prep. But Elvis is a very, very strong grandmaster. And if he isn't getting in trouble because of sharp tactics, I think strategically this is the kind of game. Um, we saw him outplay Alexander Kostinyuk in that Grunfeld, yeah. right? This is the kind of game yeah. that Elvis wants for the horses. For the horses, the Estonian horses. Perfect. And his, obviously, the important knight pair. Wait, knight d4. Whoa, I think White missed that. Move. I think White missed that. So I'm, I'm super tensed up in my body, and I don't know why. Knight d4. <laughs> I, like I mean, it. is White... White doesn't have... Yeah, White has to now trade off the bishop pair, which is what yeah. you were saying was one of the advantages he has here. And now he's just going to have the weak pawns. This is yeah. a very... You immediately move. remove that bishop on e2, and c4 is a problem. Yep. Um, by the way, you can't even take on b7, because I think rook b8 traps the lady. Um, oh. I, th I think, I think Forsen just missed knight to d4, straight up. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, it's not the worst in the world, because if he trades queens, at least he undoubles his pawns. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he he's definitely has the uh, positional weaknesses here. Well, this yeah, is what... it's an interesting... I wonder if I wonder if Elvis will go back to c6 now. What's funny is as crazy as knight d4 was, because if you go back to c6 and, and white trades on a5, now you maintain the structure and you have this weak pawn on c4. But no, he... Okay, he's willing to take. I assume... Oh, maybe I shouldn't assume. Maybe he doesn't need to take on e2 because now that knight isn't attacked, right? It's uh, it's actually sitting pretty on that outpost square. Yep. Well, I would love to play this position as black. I, I told you you might feel that way. Sorry. Right? That's okay. I mean, I, I was saying, when I play these as white, I, I've i lost. So right. it's not like I look at this and I'm like, oh, I'm dying to be white here. Right, exactly. Um, I was just like, teach me your ways and show me why this is yep. okay. <laughs> if king of seven comes now, you got to watch out also for g5 and king g6 just trapping that bishop on h6. Right. So, um, okay. We'll, we'll okay. see. We'll see how Elvis converts this one. Um, a lot of other exciting games we can get to as well. By the yep. way, I think... 
I think Forsen is... Okay, he has to be really careful here, because now there's also a knight coming to f7 to trap the bishop. I'm not a scientist here, all right? But I feel like white is in trouble. Um, all right, I, where, where to go? That's what I'm looking at right now. Um, so a, lot of, a lot of interesting games this round. We should, you said we should take a look at, at Volkov. Maybe we should do that. Yeah, let, let's take a look at Volkov since he's been playing so he's, well. He's, once again, just the untitled, okay, un, we unknown, but will no longer be the unsung hero uh, for the Tbilisi gentleman. I mean, he's the untitled and unknown, but they have been singing his praises all year because he just continues to wreck people on board four. That's the diamond in the rough that every manager dreams of. Right. If you're out there, I mean, obviously right now the rules still favor that. I mean, again, and I, I think it's an exciting element to the league personally. So to answer the, the question that Alexandra asked earlier... It's also part of this part of the gamesmanship of the league, right? Trying to do your best to find those underrated juniors, to find those people that you look at just go to I mean, managers could do it right now, right? Alexander, they could yep. go there like, hey, find those guys who have low classical ratings but have been playing a lot of rapid and blitz in their local community. Yeah, exactly. That's what even when I was asking you the question, I was saying, I mean, it is fair because everybody knows that and everybody right. picks their players. So right. you should be trying to do that anyways. And we right. saw that the winners last year did that by putting their manager on the fourth board who's much stronger than we expect. Yep. Um, and and it's paying off with their decision. Look at Volkov steamrolling. Yep. Although here he's yeah, not here, killing his weird. opponent yet. <laughs> yeah, this is a weird one. Um, uh, this is a Nimzo Indian with that imbalance that I referred to when I was saying the lack of imbalance we had in Myers Exchange French versus Elvis. Right. This is exactly the kind of unbalance yet. Right, you have double pawns here for White, horribly and horrible and isolated. Uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, horrible black, and isolated, horrible yeah. and isolated. But, but white has the bishop pair, the two bishops, right? And uh, the potential yeah. often for some sort of attack on the king side. But, but here, uh, Kuznetsov has has made this very, very tricky. The bishop on f4 can't move because g3 is hanging, I think. Yep. But if you don't move that bishop, I'm now threatening to take it. Yeah. So, um, so, so white can't take the knight on g4 because of e takes f4. And then he's going to be getting the pawn back. And but, but then G3's the hanging too. I, hmm. I feel like uh, I feel like Kuznetsov is making this very, very tricky for Volkov. So maybe it'll be the commentator's curse. The first time we give Volkov the full attention he deserves, we jinx him. <laughs> yeah, hopefully that's not what happens. Although. Hopefully not. Okay, I guess we can come back to this game. Um, I was taking a quick look at the game between um, Sebastian Mihalov on his name is Cuban twenty three and Captain Casanova. Yep, I, I like it because one. no player has castled here yet. Yep, it's, Mihalov it looked, versus Vestrukin. Yeah, at um, first it looked like it was a little bit Frenchy with the e six and d five pawn, but that's not what happened. Now that I look at the opening. Yeah, Captain Casanova, first of all, great username. Great username. we got to shout those out. Yeah. We're, uh, one of the exciting things that we're going to be bringing all the fans is we're just kind of preparing some fun media stuff. But we're, we're actually currently going to be polling all the players in the league very soon with why did they choose their usernames. Ooh, um, I think we should interviews. get some fun, interesting answers there. Um, my username, the most intriguing of all. Um, Daniel Wrench? Daniel Wrench. Why? How would you, you come up with that? Why? Right, yeah. only you can only ask why. Ooh. That will be the most intriguing. You, okay, knight so to c six. Are you just letting bishop come to g six and and then what? Um, yeah. I think that was. I mean, sometimes we laugh in the face of danger, but sometimes you don't go full Simba. Um, <laughs> Not this... full send here, right? I mean, that just seemed. I think bishop g six, knight g three to h five. White is just uh, in phenomenal shape. Um, Oh man. Okay. Well, what was Black afraid of that he felt forced to play knight? Or maybe he just had a very hard time coming up with. I, moves I think he's. Here? I think he's worse anyway. I mean, the idea of knight yeah. g three, knight h five is is pretty rough to deal with, regardless. And now White just plays f four, which is of course actually maybe even better than the obvious bishop g six and knight knight g three because mm 
-hmm. one thing about those checks is if you played bishop g6 and then knight g3 like the king starts to run and maybe yeah. you're losing some of your advantage so you're right uh, and Mihailov is like i'm not even gonna let you get out of this like i'm gonna open the position now before it's too late exactly um white white's pieces are much better place for any type of attack here and now He's playing queen d7. Maybe he's dreaming of being able to escape by castling queenside. So I think white has to give him a check just to stop that. Not yeah, that castling queenside. You can queenside. also play rook to c1 here and, and say you're not getting anywhere. Like you castle. I mean, that's another thing. But I, I agree with you. It seems that bishop check. Okay, rook c1. And then because if he castles. Well, I was just assuming that if rook c1 castles, there would be something. In fact, there is. I guess knight takes e6 works because there's a penny mode on f5 at the end on the queen. Right. Yeah, that's looking bad. Okay, um, so he can't even castle. Yikes. I mean, knight takes e6. Maybe a threat regardless, yeah. Works regardless, yeah. Yeah. No, this looks really, really rough. Castle short. Why? Why needed? Just play rook c1, but okay. You know, he, he is sort of inviting Vastrukin to castle long and then play knight takes e6. Right. Um, so pointing pointing out to Vestrukin, hey, you're really not threatening to go anywhere, buddy. Grab a Snickers because it's going to be a long night. Um, yeah, as long as he doesn't get too hungry, right? Right. Don't become a diva with your hunger. Exactly. Hangry. That's right. I feel like you were casted for those commercials or something, but <laughs> very nicely done. All right. Um, are there any other games you think are interesting? There are so many, so many. Yeah. Hard, hardly even knowing where to go. Um, if we just want to quickly show that, again, Elvis is doing work in this game as Black, as predicted. This is exactly up his alley. We don't even need to go there. We can just say that Black has an up a pawn, an extra pawn here. This is that game we were looking at earlier between Forsen and Elvis. Yeah. And he's on the grind. Let's go back to Lexi Sexy. Jababa right. has been bringing us the entertainment. He has. He has with that quick dynamic play. Uh, but here everything is really closed up. And he may um, he may even be worse here against the Dici. Okay. Why do I keep wanting to sing every time I say the Dici? I'm like, wake me up when. Yeah, I heard of Dici when you said that too. I, uh, I just the Dici. That's what I want to say, but it just it doesn't you, work. You should sing it. It, it does right. work. I think right. chat approves. Yeah. Uh, I, I actually saw something in San Francisco the other day that reminded me of you. Yeah. Um, I, I was walking by and there was a big billboard with hashtag dad jokes rule yeah <laughs> that's um, awesome I, and i, and I uh, saved it just to send you know? i appreciate that dad <laughs> yeah. jokes do rule they're just the best so do dad bods i uh, hear chess bra, oh, in the chat. Chess bra. <laughs> <laughs> all right queen of eight here comes queen e4 threatening queen h7 indeed ladici plays it not every day you see jababa with his queen on h8 i feel like this is a position right. alexandra where we think jababa's white right right uh, if you had to pick and you're looking at it without knowing who's who, right. that's what should be. But Ladici is just, I mean, it feels like he should be moments away from getting a huge attack. I like King H2 because it opens up Rook G1. Yep. Um, here comes the Rook to G1, maybe with F5 to follow. Um, okay, F5. F5 played so by what Black. A bold move because why doesn't E takes F6 work? I don't think it works because after takes Black takes back and now the king is the king on H2 is quickly going to become in more danger. Right. I don't think you can take E6. Well, I mean, I guess you can, okay, but did probably because he had to. <laughs> Actually, here Black could take G4 and then play Knight E3 at the end of the line with a whole lot of fork emotes in the chat. Come on. Yeah. Wow! Oh, um, there, there, there uh, it is. There's a, there's a fork on the board, right? Yeah, yeah. No, but this is crazy. How just a normal looking move, King H two, can allow Black to get enough counterplay here. He didn't even take on F six. I love it. I, I think Fork. he, I think yeah. he maybe should have taken on F six. Um, because now you're well, giving up the E six pawn, and I feel like maybe there's something that follows there that's really dangerous for black like the knight coming back to e5 at some point queen e6 right. knight takes c4 bishop g6 or something and yeah i don't know i mean i don't know this whole position is about to get really wild i guess if i had to bet i would still bet on jababa because he eats positions like this for breakfast and he has seven minutes for breakfast versus the other guy who's like yeah. taking a bagel and running to catch the train speaking uh, of which 30... i had a bagel this morning Let's use our bagel emotes. Woo! I'm clicking. I'm gonna be first in the chat. Oh nope. no, you beat me. Wow. Feels bad, man. Okay. 
Um, so yeah, uh, Lorenzo is taking his time here, which makes sense. It's a critical position, um, and has hopefully he doesn't flag. He takes knight takes. So what's I, I said bishop g six, but then as soon as I did, I was like, yeah, Danny, you know what we're talking about. Um, so I don't know. Hopefully he doesn't go for that. I mean, knight e five. Okay, knight e five right away is interesting. It threatens knight g six. Yep. So I'm so Jababa probably just has to take back with the knight. Right, but I guess here White will take, and you've just got like a million and a half pawns for the rook, which right. This is not this is not how human beings were meant to play chess. So no, uh, this is not a comfortable position for either side, which is the best part because we get to watch them figure out a way out of this. So you you don't like taking back on e5? Okay, so d takes. I think he had to. He, he, he took with the D pawn instead of the F pawn. Um, Can black take on F4? Yeah, we're going to stick on this game for a little while here because yeah, I think it's really like, interesting yeah. and uh, I want to see how the, tackets, the tactics continue. Yeah. Yeah, I like knight takes F4 because rook takes D7, black takes the queen, so... Okay. Maybe he has to play queen G4 after knight takes F4 and protect his rook. By the way, uh, Volkov did did just win again. So okay. we what, a what a shocker! What <laughs> at least we didn't curse him though. What 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 happened here? Um, wow, he backed up the bishop to c one, and after takes took on h seven, and then took g four. I wouldn't have predicted that this was so good for White, but I guess that. Just really, really hard for Black to play the position with the H file, I guess. Okay, so that's what happened, and then Volkov, uh, Volkov took him down. All right, well, Volkov wins again. Again, just the 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 story of the year so far. If you're a fan of the Tbilisi gentlemen and wondering how exactly are they leading the Eastern Division in their first year in the league, well, yeah, um, um, that's a big part of it. I know five point. I mean, also they're board three. Um, Giga. Kuparzi has four points as well, so very strong team. Yep. Um, okay, well, staying on, on the game we're on, we can we can see that it looks like Jababa is indeed going to defend this one. Um, right. Now that he's trading off pieces, if the rooks come off the board, it's easy for him to take the pawns, and yep. if not, then he's going to grab another one on h5. Looks that way. So, yeah. And indeed, white only has one second. Nope, white lost on time. Yep. There you go. Threw okay, in the well, towel there. The uh, gentlemen continue to improve and increase on their lead now with a three and a half point lead over the Moscow Phoenix. Wow, so, this is um, a huge lead so far. Where to go next? We had another game end uh, in exciting fashion. Poor little Greeny, uh, okay. which is Grandmaster Kobo, oh. won one in, in style. Oh, nice, nice. Very um, nice attack here. I, I'm at on move 23 and I see all of... Uh, Gargatali's, sorry, Garg Tagali's pieces on the eighth rank. Yeah, very. Yeah, what what exactly was uh was uh, Black doing here? Um, I just want to see how this one finished off. Everybody came to the king side, played Rook F1, and I guess it's just mate because there's no way to deal with Queen to D3 and Queen to H7. Mm-hmm. Like, if the bishop moves, obviously there was a threat of rook takes f8, then queen to d3, and knight f6, and you just take it. And it's mate. Yeah. So that must have been why Garg Tagali, Garg, Garg Tagali, Garg Tagali, say that five times, like Garg Tagali. Gar I'm, gonna, I'm not going to forget to gargle Gargatali, later Gargatali, with Gargatali, my Gargatali. listener. Ah, I got to okay. gargle, gargle out. The you know, third the, one was the, the challenge. Okay. Hashtag fight gingivitis. Um. <laughs> Yeah, gar garga to golly. Garga to golly. Yeah, chat, you guys can try it as well. If anybody says it five times fast, tag us on Twitter, and yep. uh, I'll retweet you. There's your award. We've got Kostiniuk with the white pieces versus Hammer. I feel like we see these two throw down often. It's because we follow the Arena Kings and, yep. and the fact that they both stream and play. Yeah, um, I've seen them play a couple times as well. I wonder what their overall score is, but... They, they are very familiar with each other's playing style. This sure. is something they've gotten into before. And they're also familiar with the scenario they're about to get into, which is mutual time pressure, right? The, uh, yeah. The time scrambles that we've seen these two get into have led to some clippable, legendary moments where 
uh, stalemates and all kinds of stuff. So um, we'll see how Castinia handles this time pressure now. She ends up offering the queen trade. Okay. Which, okay, I guess the biggest issue with the end game that's a... Whoa, did she just lose the exchange? Because maybe Hammer can take on a one. Oh, take no. On no, if you take a one, there's 97 check, and then queen takes with check in her mizzo. Very nice, very nice. So okay, so no takes, blunder there. Check and shake and bake there. Um, I mean, Black could just trade off, and I, he's he should. Up, I think he should be probably just take the six. end, right? Yeah. I mean, never, never, never mind. No, rook no, a but no, you're right. I mean, Black is still going to be upon. I think because I think if the rook is coming to a eight, okay, I B8 wasn't sure about rook d seven after. Oh no! I, well, rook there's a the bishop. Eight, rook seven, but okay, this is better. An, Rook b8 prevents rook d7 because of rook b1, right? Yeah. Um, and if... Actually, it's actually really irritating for white because now she has to waste this time, king of one. I think the black rook will come to b2 anyway, if I had to guess. Yeah. Um, he want, he'd want to attack the pawn from behind. Rook b2, Although, rook a2. he might just try to grab it as fast as possible. Yeah, plays rook b3 and rook a3. I guess that also makes sense. But now that Kostinyuk's not getting mated, I mean, she can go after her own counterplay. Things like rook d7, and then knight c6, or even knight to b5 into, into c7. Those are both possible. I actually think maybe knight b5 is even better than knight c6. Do you think she can hold this position? I think so, especially because all the pawns are on one side of the board. Mm -hmm. Regardless of the material for black, this extra e-pawn here. Yeah. Um, I mean, they, they are also both in time pressure, though, and it's probably easier for Hammer to play this. But he... I don't know, though. I mean, the knight and rook are really tricky to deal with when the king is on one side of the board. I mean, here knight c7, 98 is coming. I actually feel the opposite. I think that, I think that objectively, black should have been fine. But if you're looking at time pressure, I would almost prefer to be white here. I think I think white is in that little of danger. And Hammer is, she hammer gonna, is, is she uh, quickly accept... repeating the position, trying not oh, to... Oh, he keeps time. going. He may regret that. Knight to d5 <laughs> now. Oh, man. Tricky knights. Yeah, the knights are tricky. Um, now she's threading 98. That's why she came back. Yeah. 98. Um, ooh, now she's bringing her king in as well. She, she she's should just go for well. it. She's playing very well, very fast. So uh, too strong, too good. Not too weak, too slow. Yeah. Oh, G5 was a bad move. It opens up King E4, King F5, and the king can get in. So she, Hammer has to be very careful here. Again, under time pressure. Yeah, King like, E4, in a really King tricky F5, position. yeah. I the really am nervous in. to be... I, I don't like the way... I think Hammer probably should have just taken the draw. To Hang be on, totally I want to see Hammer's I, face I, right now. Okay, looking at the time and looking at how dangerous this is, I think he's going to lose this game. She almost allowed the rook trade. That would have been a huge blunder for her, giving up the... Now she's going to play knight f5. Uh, knight g7 check is coming, followed by taking h5. White's just winning here. Uh, she should I, have just I think checked it's and fascinating traded. how much easier this was to play for white, even yep. being down a pawn, just because rook and knight versus rook and bishop is so much more tricky in time pressure. Well, and it's also so much easier to play when the pawns are on one side of the board. So the fact that black was yeah. up a pawn like, made almost no difference to the fact that... Uh, um, because they were all on one side of the board. Yep. Okay, but now it looks again technically should be a draw, but harder for Hammer. He's he's no, gotten some of his time back though. I only I don't understand why she's why she's awkwardly bringing. She needs to just bring the knight around to a more aggressive square. If she can get the knight to e4, if she can get the knight to e4, um, mm -hmm. she should have winning chances. Right, because she wants to be putting pressure on g5. So it uh -huh. looks like she's trying to shuffle, but yeah, okay, they drew the game. She couldn't do it easily. Obviously can't play knight f2 or knight f6 to try to hop on there. And But I honestly think that, and I think Alexandra would, would uh, acknowledge this herself, a lot of this was the fear of time pressure that didn't allow White to win this game. I mean, she doesn't handle herself in these situations as well as she would like. Yeah. Um, I mean, this position, to be frank, after rook takes h6, she just went from being down a pawn to be this is a, this is a this is a position white should win every time especially yeah. given that black has almost no time on the clock the rook and knight have proven themselves so much easier so really uh i think an unfortunate game for the wizards who could have used that game to get back in the standings here right i mean right they're uh so 
again, it, I mean, no, no, no harsh judgments. I know that Kostinik has had experiences. I mean, I was literally referring to the fact that Hammer has swindled her so many times under time pressure. I was being more politically she correct. She swindled him as well. Um, right. So I think she thought. just has such a bad taste in her mouth of him tricking her that she just didn't, <laughs> she didn't want any part of it. I mean, Hammer is a tricky guy. You He's guys tricky. have seen that clip, I hope. Well, there's well, so many other games we didn't get to see the finish for. I'll just bring up and show you that Georg Meyer did, in fact, win by resignation here um, over Luka Lenich. Uh, sure. Jordan Meyer has had a very good result so far, hasn't he? Okay. He yeah. he wasn't leading as much the board the top boards going in, uh, but he was but he was right there amongst the yep. best. Yep. Um. So Meyer wins. Good game for him. Um, as you pointed out uh, in the game, the uh, Captain Casanova game that was super interesting. We were following this one earlier. I'm gonna back up and show everybody how that finished. Yep. Um. <laughs> I'm such a tricky guy. They remember that clip. They remember it. Um, yeah, he's uh, he's super tricky, and and again, she she's had too many bad experiences of him tricking her to 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 go for that. So, uh, um, Duna Mess is asking, can somebody explain the logic behind doing a battle royale stage? I think we talked about this before, but first, it puts players from different divisions to get to play other teams in case one division is stronger mm -hmm. but it also has a different format where you're playing only against the other board ones if you're a board one so it's testing how you play against people you're right. rating not just different stages yeah i think from a league fairness point of view the first point you made is the key which is that in such in seasons where the Pacific and Atlantic may may seem to be just posting stronger lineups than the Eastern and Central. You're trying to add a little bit of fairness to that and and give yeah. them an opportunity to prove they're a better division with this sort of interleague matchup, right? Um, yeah. And then, like you said, I think uh, just from an entertainment standpoint, when we get to see all the grandmasters play only grandmasters and all the all the the uh, the the unknown stars kind of prove like who the best board for is, it just adds a new a d new dynamic, right, to how and why these teams are built, and who really is the best team in their division. So, yep. Um, there you go. Hopefully that. Hopefully that <laughs> and helps. Greg is pointing out that the Eastern is killing it big time. That is true. That is true. Well, I, I mean, not as I mean. Let's see. So the Baden Baden Snowballs and the Norway Gnomes are both right there, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, they're they're central teams. Um, but yeah, I guess Tbilisi and and Moscow. Being uh, being Eastern teams are certainly certainly leading the way. Tbilisi really, I guess, is just crushing everybody. I mean, honestly, if if but if not for Volkov, where would they be? I mean, yeah, Volkov has been helping a lot. I mean, both they're they're both lower two boards. I totally agree there. Yeah, um, yeah you mentioned Kuprizi as well. Um, yeah, we'll look at that game. He actually drew his game against Belyakov this round. Uh, Kuprizi. Oh, okay. So not not a win for Kuparazzi this time, but uh, yeah, overall been doing really well. So, uh, Baden Baden is Germany. Yes, we baker. Fragrant socks. Good question. It's actually not real coffee. Um, it's not real or fake coffee. It's actually an emergency, which is a vitamin C drink. Emergency. Are you I'm trying try to, get not on... to get sick? Can I get it on camera without it? I... <gasps> it spilled on my computer. Ah! To... Oh no! Did you actually? I Ugh. legit did. Should I oh, zamboni it? The Can oh, I man. zamboni? Your your what? Can I zamboni? Will you be offended by that? No. Do you know what a zamboni is? No. It's where you drink. <laughs> it's where you drink off the table. Oh, got it. No, I think that's the classy thing to do. That's in this a, situation. that's a, it, when you when you commit a party. I was trying to show that it was emergency. I'm a party foul. I don't know if I want to. Should I zamboni? That's why I use. That's why I use a. You missed a card. lot of things. I'm zambonying. Oh my gosh. Okay, quick R on Zoom. Okay, I had to get off the keyboard. Zamboni. Yeah, he's taking the slurp. Not in Fortnite in real life. Oh you didn't expect it, but it's happening. It okay. could be it could be a forever a forever thing. No, I dropped it on my computer. Yeah, I'm glad other people didn't know what a Zamboni was. Either. <laughs> <laughs> it's a part. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um do do you mind grabbing me a napkin though, like seriously? You can throw the Studio C on if you want. We're just starting. Oh, my gosh. But um, I zambo there's napkins in there, I think. I think there's some in there in the in the, in the, in the, the, the tool drawer. And you say I'm gross because of pizza with ranch. You're never living this First of all, down. Zamboni is a completely normal thing. If your table is clean, 
If you're afraid to Zamboni off your own table, what does that say about how you're keeping track of care of your house? Uh, it means you're an average human who has some dust on their keyboard. <laughs> no, I I spilt I spilt sticky emergency. This is like this is what, like a nightmare I had once, where like my two year old was putting her licorice fingers all over everything. Oh, and I then I had to. Off it happens. You know, and then you're like, now it's all sticky. And are you testing your keyboard? I'm touching my keyboard right now. Is that why you're typing in the chat, or? Yeah. Oh, is that okay. what I was doing? Yeah. You're ah! putting a <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> oh man. I was touching my Quick keyboard. Watch. Time the chat. out, Danny. Just kidding. You're ready. Right. Okay. Well, um, crisis averted. Um, it seems like you're you're still here. Your keyboard's still yep. work, working. Yep. Everything's gonna be okay. Okay. Um, All right. So I think the game between Grandmaster Giga Kupardzi and International Master Vladimir Selerstov, so okay. Karanke, is looking a little interesting given that it's so early. Okay, let's do it. And obviously, the, the gentlemen are just doing so well. Is yeah, it... we need to get him a sippy cup. We need to get him a sippy cup. <laughs> <laughs> is it is it interesting mainly because it looks like Black just blundered a piece? Uh, I mean, yes. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out if that's the case. Um, this is actually this is actually a common trick you have to be careful of in this structure. I, I've seen it before where you just completely... Because we have this sort of uh, subconscious thing, Alexandra, where we don't consider people moving their G-pawn in front of the king. You just really? don't look at G4, right? Because you're yeah, like... Why would you move the pawn? Right, that's just a bad move. You can't do yeah. that. Oh and my gosh, White... he played knight h6. That is a free piece. That is a free piece. Okay, he blundered. No, no, he played knight takes d4. Oh, sorry. Which sorry, is still I... a piece. No, it was already a piece. The knight was yeah. legit trapped there. Yeah, uh, okay. So I think I think uh, Kuparadzi, uh is just just winning here out of the opening and again it's a good good lesson we learned from okay anytime you're playing a position where you you're not considering every possible tempo move like those attacking moves you have to remove your biases and allow allow yourself to consider a move like g4 and uh white's just up a piece now so there you go okay i guess we can move on to the next game then um yeah good talk this... right yeah. Uh, Bador Jababa is taking on Alexandra Kostinyuk this round. Lexi Sexy Ooh, and Chess Queen. What a matchup. Yeah. And All right. So they've traded off uh, one bishop and one knight. Jobava has a nice pawn chain. Kostinyuk is already trying to break through the center with c5. Um, it seems like white might get some ideas of trying to attack on the king side or maybe... E6 at some point, not yet though. I I I uh like Jabava's position probably more than I should, just because I think about one, this is a great French structure for white. We know how we know how the French does, right? Yeah, um, it wins, okay. Right? We've got the threats of Queen G four, the knight coming into either F five and H five, the dark square mm -hmm. bishop. I don't know. I Again, it, that's very superficial analysis based on the fact that there are some concrete issues to deal with, right? I mean, Black Black can try to play things like bringing the knight into b3 and maybe get rid of that dark square bishop. Uh, Black might even try to play f6 in some positions if you really want to change the structure, but that's objectively... How you never play f6? Just kidding. Objectively, the bishop on b7 is, is blocked. Mm -hmm. The French structure is a successful one here for white in the sense that the space advantage is real. There's no knight on f6, so there's going to be the potential for an attack over here. Whoa, I, knight h5. And you that's, know what it threatens? That's fun. It, it threatens uh, bishop h6. That is a good just, move. Just winning on the spot. Right. So he has to get rid of the uh, fork emote on f6. Maybe right. he can move his king or his queen here. Obviously, those are the, the two best options. Um, I, I kind of like queen e6 because it stops against knight f6 and the... The fork here. The biggest but... issue I have is the position is so close. Where is Black's counterplay? It's something like rook e3 after queen e6. And I just bring the rook to g3. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I just, uh, yeah. I think, I think this lifts. is actually going to be a, a pretty tough one here for uh, for Kostinyuk. I think this could turn into a Jababa attack. Yeah. Coming fast here. This is nice. Uh, how he was able to turn the Nimzo good for white so quickly. Bishop c8? Did she just miss bishop h6? 
Bueller. Bueller. Wait, wait. Hang on, what did you say? If she, if she Bueller, just Bueller. Missed... Bueller. Uh, you have an ambulance outside your door. You want to go answer it? Oh, yeah, sorry. It was it was coming for the dad jokes, but I said, don't worry, uh, he's done. Yeah. LOL. Good recovery. <laughs> Good recovery. Gotcha. Okay. So Nice. So Bishop H6 did come Although in. I was right. Bishop H6 was just crushing, and, and I'm pretty sure she missed it. Now, you could take on G7, I think, with either piece, but maybe I mean, Simplis is just to take with the knight. You could also just trade queens and win a pawn, right? Yeah, I was thinking though, if you're gonna if you're gonna take, probably best to take with the bishop though, because you keep the queen kind of protecting the knight. And now, okay, bishop g4 can be met by knight f6. Yep. Or bishop takes f8. Oh my gosh, that was not a mom joke level. <laughs> Maybe this is Hess's way of sending regards, because he always has ambulances yeah. in the background. Where where is? Oh, Hess, there he is. Hey, hey, Robert. Yep. We miss you. He heard the ambulance. Is that his emote? <laughs> that his... is his emote. <laughs> that is worthy of subscribing to his channel just because of that. The ambulance. Anytime right. you hear an ambulance, now you have the medic. Yeah, I love it. Oh, okay. Um, All right. So, yeah, it looks like he's going to get a nice win. Just another one for the gentleman. Um, he's on a roll. He and, is. And, uh, okay, as predicted, just to, just to show... Uh, Kuparazzi mm -hmm. did indeed win this one as white, where he just won a piece out of the opening, so that's yeah. done. That was... Um, I, I don't think... Was that the... I don't want to say worst game. That's not a nice nice thing to say, but that was just... Well, it's it's tough to lose like that, but again, Knight F5, it's a good trick, and I think, again, computers have made, I would say, modern chess better in the sense that they've helped us remove our biases where we would not consider some moves or we would miss tactics because you have the principles don't open your king don't move your pawns in front of your king or don't put a piece on the edge or whatever which is you know those principles exist for a reason and they're guidelines right. in terms of plans and strategic thinking but execution and like accurate calculation should overdo all of that and computers find moves like that all the time yeah. and it's just you know winning tactic there you go um Okay, the other big one, so it looks like Kostinyuk is just going to have to try to hold down down this endgame. The other big one is between Georg Meyer and Hammer. We had Hammer yeah. and uh, Kostinyuk last round, streamer on streamer crime. Now we yeah, have was, Hammer versus Meyer. They played, they played in English to start off with, the symmetrical variation, and now they're in a very George Meyer-type position. Yep. Uh, Boy George. It's... Pardon? Boy George. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's see. Uh, Hammer well, remember, has... Hammer's white, so it's Boy George. Boy George? Boy George, but it's Hammer. Hammer's the one playing the Boy George opening. That's true. That's true. But that means that Boy George knows how to defend it as well. So... Right. And we've already oh. seen that happen, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I like White's position because I tend towards the side that has a little bit more space, and it's nice that he's putting pressure on d6, but um, Black doesn't really have any weaknesses here other than the d6 pawn, which is pretty easy to defend so far. Yeah, and this is also just a typical kind of hedgehog structure where, yeah, White has the edge you described because of the space and because of the pressure on d6, but Black is like, and is that going to be enough, right? Black's... Uh, breakthroughs of d5 and b5 are the things that he looks to get if and when he can do it, do it safely um right now i don't think black needs to because i don't know where the where the next move is for white all right but all right bishop a3 um so the question if you're white is are you having to commit to sorry if you're black do you have to play a move like knight c8 because that would be irritating all right he does it but now you're full you're in full defense mode knight c8 94 is coming. You have to play Bishop E7. Mm -hmm. um, I guess from Meyer's perspective, there's nothing still more more worse about Black's position than there already was. The D6 pawn is still a target, but where's White's? Uh, where's the breakthrough? Where's the beef? Right. So White play... has to try to make another weakness here. Then, if he's yep. actually going to take advantage, obviously that's the classic end game strategy here. Yep. Um, maybe he can try and break open on the king side. Since black is so defensive, obviously he hasn't moved either of his pawns. 
Yeah, I mean, there. I think this is kind of typical. Like, computers will always think white is just, like, better here by, like, a point, point and a half, but, like, there's no weaknesses for black, But and mm -hmm. if the space is all you have, then um, it won't amount to anything. Just to show right. real quick, Jababa did win against Kostinia. This was the final position. She, uh... She tried to give up a piece for a pass C pawn for kicks oh, and gigs, but um Oh, was, that's a that's a was, devastating loss. Yeah, oh. she just resigned cuz cuz it's over. Um the rook would have just come back to B1 yeah. and stop the pawn. So Yeah. Poor Alexander there, but again uh it's just dangerous to take on that kind of position against against uh Fedor Jabava, so. Right. Right. Um, um, another and, one. And for those of you who do play against the Nimzo Indian, that's a game to to look at. I know I do, so I saved it to take a quick look after. And if there's any games that you play the opening, these are pretty instructional. Yep. Let's keep the Hammer Meyer one on, but also go through and show you what happened in this game between Elvis and Lenich, because this was super, uh, super. First of all, another miniature, and unfortunately for Jan Elvis, again on the losing side of it, he was white in a. Whatever you want to call it, again a weird ready with B three. Yeah. Um, um, maybe maybe Hikaru Nakamura is hurting everyone's chess because he can play chess this way as white. Not everybody else can. Right. He's um, inspiring people in the wrong way. Man, yeah. Luka Lenich has played very well today. It's a pity that his his teammates have had a rougher yep. time. Um, Black gets a big center, and then uses it aggressively on the king side for an attack. Um. After bishop to g4, f3, and bishop d7, you could already sense the makings of white maybe having some weaknesses and black having the potential uh, of, of space over here. There's also this weak f4 square, so maybe the knight could come to h5 here in a few moves. We'll see what happened. Rook to d8. Okay. Eventually, black goes for this idea with knight h5, and after g3, queen g5, bishop c1. Oh, it looks like, actually, he just, looks like Elvis just completely missed that knight takes g3 was a threat. Yeah. He just blundered it because the whole reason why was what happened in the game. After takes, the reason it's losing is because after queen h5 check, king g1, bishop c5 is lights out. And the king is toast. Um, it is. And so we, we looked, we, we know that Jan Elvis is obviously an extremely strong player. Do you think that him falling into this had something to do with it being a different playing style, or, or what do you think happened here? He just has been playing so well, well today. I, I yeah, I, well, I think in the in the rapid setting, um, all players of all levels can make blunders, but I think stylistically, you're right. I think Elvis prefers the. What are the two nice games? We, we've actually done a lot of Jan Elvis today for some reason, but what are the two great games we've seen him play? These sort yeah. of positional grind out affairs. You know, we'll call it old school Soviet chess, where he beat Kostinyuk. Right, and then he had this other game in the uh, the, the bishop takes c3 that that uh, sort of ready position, right? Um, uh, and then, I mean, the double pawns one that you said, you know, you, you also lose as white, right? Where we learn right. from him, and but then we've seen him lose two games quickly, basically in the first stage, right? Basically, just make tactical blunders and lose before move 20, which is again what happened here. So I yep. think stylistically, some players are better in certain ways, which is positional chess and a slower game, which in rapid may not always be the kind of game that you get, you know? Yeah, yeah. And that, that's an interesting thing, too. Maybe the players who are better at these quick games tend to be better in rapid as well. So Right. Okay. Let's look at Volkov game again. Um, we'll keep Yay, that, keep that game between Volkov. Hammer and Meyer going. It, it looks like... The inspiration for all of us. You could be really good online, even if you could over 400 points on what your classical is. So, yeah, seriously. Stay training, chat. Here, he, here he's worse, though. though. Maybe for the first time today. We thought we yeah, jinxed him last time. Whenever we look we at his position, we, we're not sure. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, Vastrukin has, has a good position here as white. Um, the knights, the knights are dominant. On these squares, um, but he he can probably trade out of it. Okay, so he played knight d5 because if knight takes, then he can grab the knight on d6. I th I think if he trades off here, he should be should fine. be okay. Yeah, he should be fine. Um, it it seems like it's closed off enough, even if White has that pawn on g5 and a little my, bit. My of only an worry edge. is. You still own the E file, even with the knight gone. You still own the yeah. E8 square if you're Vastrukin, and so 
that makes it harder to be black. Um, yeah, bishop to c1 makes sense. I... Even if you just come to f4 and take off the bishops, then suddenly you gain the e7 square to try to attack. So Right. I really like the idea with king f8 and just rook e8 right away. Do whatever it takes to get on that e-file as fast as possible. Yep. Um, even if black is slightly worse, I think trading off the rooks is the best way for him to continue here. Volkov is a beast, says one already. I agree. Volkov. Okay. Um, so who, who else is still playing that we maybe didn't take a look at? Um, let's see. King of Fate, maybe maybe now Bishop of Four, black, black can defend. If Bishop of Four, oh, ooh, Knight F6 right away. The whole point is if takes, takes, there's no rookie eight because of Bishop H6 check winning immediately. So Knight F6 is a nice way, in fact, Maybe you can steal Knight the Knight six, H7 yeah, that, that is a nice move. Um, does black, black, black doesn't have to take, does he? Well, I guess you're attacking against h7, so that is annoying. Yeah, and, and here, Vastrukin is just going to sit tight, which I also like, because you're still pointing out that knight takes f6, and opening up this bishop in h6 is probably never your favorite thing to do. Mm -hmm. And so, why go after h7 right now? You can even play king f3, king g4 even, kind of slowly press your advantage of controlling both sides of the board due to the fact that the only open file is under white's uh white's control right. so yeah um, and that'd be terrible because his king would be stuck on g8 and he'd be constantly having to defend back rank mates just wouldn't be able to get out of it oh man yeah this could be this could be the first time volkov has proven human yeah um, uh, and, uh, and speaking of, of humans, which uh, the Norwegians aren't, what the heck is right. going on in Hammer's board? Seriously, right? Hammer actually looks like he just took this one down smoothly, just crushed Meyer here. Knight E8 check is followed by a rook roll, not to be confused with a rick roll. Uh, I, hang on, let me pump the jams over here. Yeah, right? Yeah. Never the, uh... Game, Bob. Never gonna tell a the world, lie. The world's welcome I wasn't on camera there, because I did the rick roll. <laughs> Never okay. gonna give you a... Um, anyway. <laughs> what? Okay. Um, Leave dude out of this, yeah. Have you noticed how much Jan Christoph again. Duda looks like Rickroll? Whoa! Hammer yeah. just won. Yeah, Hammer went, it, was, it was mate in three, me. actually. Yeah. 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 Okay, so H5 played there um, by Volkov, trying to defend this one for the first time under some real pressure, under 30 seconds here on the right side. Now you can see Daniel Forsen taking on Ladici. Um... Um, someone's saying I call the Norwegians not human. I'm just saying that it's a compliment. It means that the Norwegian team is playing like a machine, which in chess That's right. is the best thing That's right. ever here. That's right. Um, Hess is not happy because he stole his joke, Danny. He, Hess, he, steal, he Hess makes, a makes a living off stealing my jokes, so jokes. I don't even want to hear it. Um, <laughs> I don't even remember what joke he's talking about. Did I? If I, I said young, I think I said young Christoph Duda looks like Rick Roll, not you, Hess. Oh, oh what man. You're about. There you go. Oh, Hammer's finally about. smiling. He's showing some emotions on his stream. Okay. Nice. Yeah, well, he did just checkmate Georg Meyer in, in, yeah, in I feel like sassy that's fashion. Serious. So you got to like breaks that. breaks the Oh, my um, gosh. There's a, a little guy on your amazing, amazing the, uh Okay, so Knight takes F6 happened, but now in a weird way that, that included a peace sack. And Volkov is actually legit under pressure now. Oh, because H5, he just on passant. I didn't realize he could do that. And if bishop e7, he can just push h7. That's the point. Because if knight takes, you can take e7 with a fork. So bishop e7 was play. Oh, that's what's happening. Okay, and now okay. now white's just uh, still in control. And again, this is... I'm not trying to harp on the idea I, I mentioned too much, but it's just because it's the theme of why white has been in control. The only open file is really just such a dictator of who will control any transition into an endgame because... Okay, just imagine if you take the C and the A pawns off the board for both sides, the uh, one open file is irrelevant. There's three of them, right? And, and again, yeah. I, I've said it before, but open files are the, are the commodities of, of chess, right? Supply and demand. The less there are, the more valuable they are. In this sort of situation, White wins this game because he controlled the only open file and just dominated the threats because of it. Yeah. So Volkov is going down. His perfect score is, I mean, probably going down. 
it may be a little too soon to say, but there goes his perfect score. Yep. Um, and <laughs> uh, I like Max making fun of me because it did sound like a silly beginner thing. On Passant, I didn't realize he could do that. <laughs> That's not, Wait. which is actually hilarious because there's so many. Is that how pawns move? Uh, did you ever read that article by Eric, our our CEO? What did he write about? It was about? hilarious. No, the amount of tickets we get to support where people claim that en passant is magic when they don't know the rule. Oh, man. Is, so is this hilarious. is the Harry Potter you believe in. No, that... they, these are hilarious. No, you have to find this article. Someone has to okay. find it, please, and share it because it's like – Please link it. This sounds they, amazing. People saying things like, I moved my pawn, and his pawn moved <laughs> like – a ninja and took my pawn behind like oh no his pawn illegally killed and ate my pawn right just like the most crazy descriptions that's hilarious and they're like if if you go through my game if you go through my game you can see this bug that still exists on chess.com you have to fix this or i'm leaving (laughs) wow how could you guys not take care of that bug i don't believe it that's great oh man i bet never mind (laughs) oh all right this is over this okay. is over. Volkov is uh, is going down for the first time. So kudos to him for shocking us when the fact that he actually loses a game. Forsen yeah. looks like he's also about to hand Ladici his next loss. Ladici hasn't had his best chess today. No. And I was actually just a quick shout out to Hannah Marie Kleck because she actually got four and a half points on board for. And I, yeah. I didn't point that out earlier. She played very well for the body uh, and snowballs. Ponsulea. Uh, Ponsulia, Ponsulia, Ponsulea. I want to. I want to believe that Ponsulea is related somehow to Princess Leia. So I'm going to keep saying Ponsulea, even though it's okay. Ponsulia. Like maybe, maybe it'll just uh, more it'll stick, right? So that that uh, seems fair. The uh, either way, Ponsulia lost in kind of exciting fashion here. Just to show you, Gregorians mm-hmm. had a crushing attack. And uh, finish things off nicely with knight takes f7, queen g6, and then rookie a checkmate. So, congratulations there to Gregorians. Wow. The Tbilisi gentlemen now have 18 and a half points. That's Pons- a huge Pons- lead. 25 bits for Pantsuit Leia. Pantsuit. <laughs> Pantsuit Leia. There you Pants- go. <laughs> it's uh, the modern Leia, you know? <laughs> Pantsuit Leia. I think that's how I pronounce it. Yeah, Pantsuit Leia. The modern Leia, right? No, no yep. dressing stereotypes. She's nope. wearing pants as a suit and uh, also playing I mean, chess on chess. She was chess. already breaking stereotypes before, but that's, that's right. okay. She was. She was leading rebellions and we, even with yeah. the hair bun, right? What I was mean, that about at the time? Like dressing well in rebellions. Yeah. Well, I mean, just... the hair bun at the time, right? I mean, well, that was a statement. I, yeah. It was a statement. Exactly. By I think hair buns are really the best right. type hair buns, of hair Hair buns, style, certainly so. we have some bias about that. Um, no, none at all, yeah. All right, let's uh, check out here. Raphael, another Ninja Turtle, Mate, Mate Sevenik. Okay, he's up two. He's up a pawn. Um, his he's up bishop a pawn, is but the H stopping. pawn is strong. Here comes king g two and knight g three. The yeah, bishop knight chased out. He's gonna lose. Oh my gosh! Wow. I bet this was one of those end games he just did not expect would turn out well for Black. Right, and he's trying here. He's trying to keep Black's king trapped in there, but the knight is gonna push him out and yep. He's and, win the, this. and the B pawn will be stopped. Here you can just play wow. king g one. I think. Because if b6, knight c5, and if king takes, you queen would check. Indeed, Kobo finds it. Yeah. Wow. Um, wow. Yeah. That's that's a fancy finish there, but a heartbreaking one for Mate Sevenik. And as you said, Luka Lenich may be having his best performance of the year, Alexandra, but the rest of the Turtles are having some of their worst performances of the year, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's unfortunate. Really, really tough. Um... Tough for the Turtles, who are currently at the bottom of the standings here right. in this Battle Royale. Um, That's true. Um, I get, So there's one game left. You you already have it up there with Laura. Yeah. Another Turtle, another another game, another Turtle. <laughs> no, that, that's, that's true. What would Master um, Splinter say to them right now, just to kind of calm them? What would who? Master Splinter. Oh, gosh. he would. I don't know who that is, but... Um, are you, what wait I, a second. Are you serious? I, I wish I wasn't, but I am serious. I could tell you what Master Botez would tell them. Okay, what would Master Botez say? Master Botez would be like, Laura, I know you haven't won yet, and maybe things are looking bad, but if you pull this off, your name will live on in glory for the rest of that the That sounds story. like something you stole from a Keanu Reeves movie. 
You sure that's uh, not from the replacements? I think Gene Hackman honestly, said that. Honestly, sometimes I get so mo motivational. You think I'm Keanu Reeves. It's understandable. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> this game, your name will live on in glory forever. Um, anyway. Oh, it's, is it a Ninja Turtle reference? What was I missing? Master Splinter. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I thought I, I still think you're kidding. I'm going to pretend you're kidding this whole time. But <laughs> anyway, Laura is going down. Communicate with me. Unfortunately for the Turtles, no, seriously, this has just been a rough day for them overall. I mean, Lenich is, we're going to see the individual scores here in a moment, but Lenich has played well, uh, holding his own amongst the board ones. Oh, 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 she she might do it. I think she heard Wait, my... Wait, what was that? Did she just swindle? Bishop takes h4? Yes. OMGs are snaps. Yeah. <gasps> oh, my God. Oh There's my God. a win with rook g3 and rook takes f3. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. We jinxed it. You we jinxed it far enough that Unik is actually going to win. Yeah. Holy shenanigans. White wins. <laughs> what in the world oh did a grandmaster just do to lose that game? Back I... that thing up like juvie. Let me. Okay. I'm just saying everybody needs what? a motivational speech every now Seriously, and then. Seriously, Master Botez. You know, we might call you in other times. Um, <laughs> King H3. Wow. Oh, I'm so, so proud of he her. He just she missed. Got that win. She got. Oh, man, I didn't even do enough. I said get a drawn glory. She's like, nah, Botez, I got you. I'm going I to I got you. Well, okay, to be you. fair, King G4 was a horrible blunder. G2 is is G two is exactly what the most logical move would be on the board. <laughs> and I, uh, uh, By the way, there's no Bishop B6 coming because takes. If you play, I don't even know what else. If you play Rook G8, I have Rook G6. Stop. So Black, Black was winning on the spot, but again, the Master Botez whisperer. Whisperer of Ninja Turtles, Master Botez. There we go. She gives the inspiration that Unuk needs, and uh, <laughs> and again, a very nice combination that Unuk finds with this, and then complete collapse here from Black after G2. Wow, Bishop F2, and then just a horrible blunder with Bishop F3, and she goes on to win. Yeah. Well, they don't. That's why the game is played, right? If it was all just a science, we would just let the computers play it. By right. the way, you can go to chess.com/ccc and check out Computer Chess. There, there's the accidental it's always, plug. It's, it's always a popular channel on Twitch, actually. Twitch.tv/computer chess. Not really. It's only got like 13 viewers right now. But um, I, I often see it up there in the top <laughs> five, you know, because they get random hosts and the computers are playing. <laughs> Whoa, Pantsuit Leia! Pantsuit Leia, the emote lives. Yes! The legend yes. is real. Um, go. She looks like she's heading into a board meeting. Yep. And, uh, uh, and that off. pun, how did you not get that board meeting? Just... Come on, you guys. I mean, I'm like, I'm like spitting hot fire over here. You guys aren't even. Because chess and puns. Oh my yes. Gosh, you guys are killing me. Oh my gosh. Um, you should just do your own comedy show. It's a long day. As we as we lose <laughs> as we lose viewers, what should we talk about here? Um, as we bleed um, as we bleed viewers who are like, what are we doing here? Um, where should yeah. we go, Miss Botez? Well, what should we talk about? Let's see. Why don't you talk about what's what's coming up soon? Um, what what is coming up soon? Is this a trick question? <laughs> no, hang on. I thought we had one more round here. We do. We do have one more round. Yeah. Okay. Um, I was just gonna say we have one more round. Um, it looks and... like the Tbilisi gentlemen they can't be caught up in behind, but yeah. uh, the Moscow Phoenix and Baden Baden and Snowballs are going to be playing for the top three spots. Yep. So they're gonna and get it, it actually, points. you know. Other than the fact that the Tbilisi gentlemen, have we had a battle royale this dominant yet? I don't think we've had it where the last that where the last round almost almost didn't matter, right? I mean, the Tbilisi gentlemen pretty much can't lose it. Um, so that that's rare. That's rare. But all right, real quick as these games get started, let's remind you that when Alexander and I are done here, you can stay in touch with the Pro Chess League all week, all day, all night long, as Lionel Richie would say. YouTube.com/slash Pro Chess League. Give us a subscription. And play it like Lionel all night. There's enough videos there to keep you going. Levy Rosman, when he gets uh, when he gets done with, uh, you know, potions class, right? We'll be we'll be hosting halfway highlights with Wilder Bigfoot. Um, oh, oh, you guys added it on. I love it. God, when he as soon as he's done with potions and you know done with charms, 
he'll be back at it hosting chess shows doing what he does best so yeah um, charming the viewers instead of the people it works it works yeah oh, okay that one fell flat that's fine <laughs> uh, sorry I was, I was distracted by david's comment uh, just kind of confirm we were saying the tbilisi gentlemen have been so dominant they've already scored more points than the than some previous dinners uh dinners winners did in six rounds so um yeah they they've been good today they've been good today the gentlemen have been good yep understatement there um why did why did levy have a random streak on his forehead good good one cash make i do like that rn is the fastest memer in the west i do agree right. with that right. um, it's one of the one of the job uh one of the things he had to do to get the job actually was yeah, it's like a quick trigger. There's like typing tests. There's meme tests. How quickly can you make a meme? You know what? For, for social media companies now, instead of like doing, you know how people have coding tests and stuff like that? They should have meme tests. Like, yeah. No, here's seriously. an event. Make a meme. You got one minute. Go. Are Unfortunately, on? Meyer, Meyer and uh, Lexi Sexy did not give the people what they paid for. They took a very quick draw. Partly oh. understandable. These uh, these long these long matches are. Is are it grueling. understandable, or or do we want to poke them a little bit for not oh, even trying? They shall they it's shall be poked. They shall be poked, year. but um. It's not like Meyer was already the most, uh, you know, aggressive player of all time. At well, least it, give it's us frustrating a game. because jababa has been playing so well, and you, we've yeah. had so many exciting games. You just wanted to see him go at it again. Uh, we had another quick draw as well as uh, Leonardo for the Turtles. Doesn't even try to get anything against Lars, Oscar, Huag, uh, Huag, 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 I don't know. I'm not a robot. <laughs> I can't speak Norwegian. Oh, um, yeah, Coffee Man is saying to poke him. Um, that's right. That's fair. Okay, well, let's see the people who, who haven't given up yet yep. on their hopes and dreams. On their, uh, haven't given up on their dreams yet, right? Yeah. Um, well, Hammer... we haven't looked that much at um, WGM Hannah Kleck, and she is one of the top performing fourth boards okay let's go there and she's playing against volkov the other yeah. top performing fourth board so that's that's a matchup to look at agreed and it's already kind of a, a weird one here right let me just wide see. open so center she has she's actually ha she has four and a half and he has five so she's the second best performing fourth board and he's the top one so far right let's see if this game changes that chat what do you think who's favored here yeah no she's so she's been second he's been top it'll help the mm -hmm. snowballs i guess clinch their second place victory as we said the Tbilisi gentlemen have pretty much wrapped up this thing um, right so uh if she can take down Volkov that'll really help the snowballs um who aren't in the division with the Tbilisi gentlemen just to remind you so if they if they mm -hmm. you know the snowballs performing well here will help them in their central division standings even if they can't overtake the gentlemen so right right so the game does matter um Knight what do we think of this position here? It's. I was going to say so the knight on d5 has... wants mm -hmm. to get discovers discoveries against the dark sword bishop, but this move is pretty good because I think the only way to defend the bishop on g4 is to either take a three or go back to d7. Right. Um, I'm not even sure which one is best. I, I'm guessing if you can get away with taking d3, that's what you should try to do. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry, taking f3. Okay. All right. Well, those those rooks of whites are looking pretty powerful so far. Um, although black is going to be able to. Whoa, whoa. Hang on. So she is threatening. Knight takes f3. White can take on g8. Does this work? The the biggest risk is his bishop takes f7 a move. Ooh, or, just, or just queen takes it, b7, but... just grabbing a pawn. It's yeah, Queen Space Seven grabs a pawn, but if you took F seven with check, I thought there was a weird thing where if the knight takes, now you can take the queen. If the rook takes, you take with check, and if the king takes, did you have Queen H five or Queen takes B seven? Maybe not. Maybe because Queen E seven or something. Anyway, so that was a weird, a weird thing to consider. But Queen takes B seven might just be, yeah. as you said, simple enough. Yeah. Um. Maybe with uh, Bishop takes F seven, Black could have tried to move his king away and just mm -hmm. keep attacking. But you're right. Okay. So. Okay, so Volkov's up a pawn. Volkov nice. is just up a, a pawn. Is is it a clean pawn? Maybe, huh? Right. Not only uh, is it is it, it seems clean, but also there's another one hanging on a seven. Maybe even if you don't take it right away, it's uh, <clears throat> excuse me. It's, right. Right. Yeah, it looks like Volkov is do in good shape. Bishop b three makes sense. Now you can go back to knight to d five, which is irritating. Mm -hmm. A seven is falling. Volkov just you know he's twenty five hundred in blitz for a reason. Yeah. So it's just. Uh, exactly. 
most of the time he's he's the heavy favorite against any of his board four opponents and the battle royale format is is really something that uh is highlighting that yeah and uh speaking of 2500s the game between alexander kosanyuk and uh, mr forson is looking really interesting both of them are trying to attack each other and Let's obviously they're some of our highlighted players in the league here yeah this is a weird one um Okay. First so instinct I like I like wait, white. Oh, this was another French defense, an exchange. How did they get here from the exchange? I have not seen the exchange. Yeah, let's let's take it. Let's take a look. Position. Exchange French. Okay. Black played the super aggressive line with this with this bishop g4 and knight c6 to castle queenside is Okay, I mean it's it's the way you create dynamic play when you put the kings on opposite sides of the board, you're going to get attacking chances for both sides. Yep. But um but I, I know a, that this line in the French exchange. I mean, I've I've looked at stuff like this. They tend to actually be worse for black, unless yep. I, that that's yeah. No, you're. I, I agree. What I was going to say is, black is trying to create something where there isn't something, right? Black really wants that attacking dynamic play. Not happy with the exchange French, so they play the castle's long variations. But I think these lines tend to really prefer white. And now she's already taking a5, c4 is coming. Okay, she did it after g5, which is where we left it, and only one other move has been played. Um, I think white could play bishop takes e4, mm -hmm. or just take on c4. Um, yeah. I guess you don't... I guess you don't really want to go for bishop takes e4, especially... Like, at the end of that line, takes everything. Black does have bishop d5, I think. Okay, so... She, she... She just take, take yeah, she C4, just takes and now she's threatening that takes Open a five. Up the file on the king. Yeah, good, 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 good. Queen, queen chess. All right. So, what did you want to take back with here? There's a couple uh, options. Yeah, I think both are good. This is this right. is just not good for Porson. Again, I think this is him trying to be a little bit too aggressive which okay from a team perspective you kind of respect their you know he wants to try to score for the raptors right, right. he doesn't want them to end up in the in the cellar and we make practical he decisions is playing, he is playing black against a exactly right gm so was it the best decision i'm right. not sure yeah no I, I don't think it was i think from a team perspective he was doing his best but now that, that may end up really backfiring um right right all right. Um, Checking out some of these other games. There's a lot of action still. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the the uh, excitement here as, as we reach the end because we already kind of have top place wrapped up <laughs> by the gentleman. Right, uh, right. Um, well, so, look, maybe we could look at s some of the uh, Phoenix or Gnome games since the Gnomes are trying to get that third spot here today, and they're very close. Yep. Uh, Hammer, because of that, is still pushing right now against Michelangelo, right. of course, Luka Lenic, yeah. two that have played pretty well today. He, um, he definitely has. Um, this is a weird one, because you kind of like black from the right. perspective that the bishop is blocking white's ability to get castled and complete things, but, but white's up a pawn. I mean, so here you have this balance of... Can black get something before white does things like f3, king f2, and gets the other rook in the game? Right. And uh, if black can get some sort of pressure, what does that look like? You know, bringing the rook into d3, are you are you playing bishop c4, and when the knight moves? Yeah. I, I'm trying to find the, con like, what what's the concrete plan black has to go for here before white gets castled and developed and and that's that's probably what hammer's thinking about which is why he's using his time yep because if it does happen and he doesn't have that peace development advantage anymore then all yep. of a sudden his pawns are looking a lot worse of course as uh commissioner greg shahadi said no i mean yeah regardless of the fact that the gentlemen have had a super dominant performance today and they deserve kudos for that Every game matters. Every every position gets more points than the other. So as you see, especially right there in the middle of the pack between the horses and the uh, you have the horses and the gnomes and the wizards yeah. all separated there. It's um, a big deal that every one of those points could change your overall standing in right. your division. Yeah, that's why I was trying to say that they were fighting for third place, which is 16 points instead of 12, and it does make a big difference for them. Oh, thank you, BJH13, for the 100 bits and 
for saying great job, you know. Nice to get a pat on the back occasionally. We love BJH. Um, all right, so who... I, I see one result finish. That was between the Barcelona Raptors and the Moscow Wizards, where... Yeah, actually, let's look at that. That was... Whoa. whoa. What a wild game there. Yeah. I think Alexandra's gonna going to finish that one nicely, so I'm glad we still have it up there. So anyone curious how that happens, they can see how Kostinyuk takes home the attack on the light squares. But look what happened here. Um, Silverstoff lost. Not his best day. Not Silverstoff's best day, honestly. Um, he yeah. goes, for an, goes for an attack. Uh, but no, wait. No, he won this one. Yeah, um, White won this one. So Yeah, okay. So he, he won this one. But okay, so redemption slightly because it wasn't his best day. But look right. at this. I mean, I feel like I would like give this lecture to a student and I would say the last thing you're going to do is play E5 here and give up the D5 square. <laughs> like... Just right, don't do you don't that. want that knight coming in there. Just but, don't so, do that. So I'd maybe just move the bishop and or uh, try to cast anything, really. Just don't push I mean, the, the, t the tension on the, the pawns here is not the end of the world because, mm -hmm. okay, white's a little bit better here regardless. White has space and all that stuff, but there's not a concrete threat. I mean, you, you could even castle long, right? Anything would have been better to maintain some dynamic tension here in, in yeah. a position like this. This is definitely more playable for black. Um, and this knight's on the edge of the board. It's not that great. And But instead, he plays e5. And I'm glad Selaverstov took it took it home because it's a good lesson for all the students of why we say don't do not do that. Right. Because even here now, like in, on move 15 with knight d2, you, now you can't take the knight for new reasons because you open up new light squares for white. So just one one kind of bad thing to another. And, and wow, this move f6 and knight c4, black just gets crushed in this game. Right. Look at this. Wow. A4 opens up the C file. Owie. It hurts. It hurts. <sighs> well, what, so what would you, what would your takeaway be here as a coach? Other don't, than don't let the D5 square, if you had to wrap I think, it up. I think that's the main thing. I mean, okay, the opening is sort of weird by both sides. I mean, it's a weird kind of D3. So it doesn't, you know, it's a King's Indian attack. It's a, it's a, it's not not a not a, a mainstream orthodox opening. This isn't a Sicilian or Rui Lopez you're teaching kids, right? So already the structure is sort of slightly unique, mm -hmm. but the main thing is just the, the the critical the critical issue of giving up such a such a huge central weakness. And honestly, fantastic play by White to just like take this home so smoothly. Um, so really good stuff there for White to play f6 and then just launch the attack home as we said. So. Good there, good win there for uh, Selaverstov helping the Moscow Phoenix stay up in it. Thank you, Hunter, for the subscription there. We appreciate your prime sub. Yes, we um, do. All right, I want to bring it back to this uh, Kostinyuk versus Forcing game because cause we're about to see something magical happen. All right, I'm catching up right now. There we go. Wow. Um, light squares. Light There's squares are not looking good here. Yeah. yeah. I think the threat uh, is knight c4 for white, I guess, to just remove the knight from d6 so that b7 is, is mate. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's one idea. Right, so try to eliminate the defender here. It's a yep. very common tactical sequence we see. Um, it's actually another reason why black can't just take e5 because then the pawn will come to e5 and, and then the knight right. still has problems. Okay, so he, Forsen just played rook e7. Um Seems like he's he's trying to help defend on c7 and not let the knight play to d7. That was the immediate threat. Okay, she played very quickly here. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Queen d5 looks great. Rook e8 is a great defensive Ooh. move because White can't take the knight on I d6. I wonder if she so missed rook that. One. I wonder if she just missed that tactic. It's like a swindle he he planted when he played rook e7, right. going for that she, trick. I think I right. think she missed that idea because now. Now, if that e5 pawn falls safely and that knight never has to move, everybody's protected. There will be no mate on the light squares today, right? Right. Um, okay, so if e6, that's that's what I was asking next, right? Because she has to defend her pawn. There was no other way to do it other than pushing. At least she has a passed pawn here. But and now I, I feel like queen f6 seems simple enough. Go, <coughs> go uh, gather that, that lost calf 
bring it back to the ranch. You know, that's what they said when they took the calf away to the little right. kid who loved it. We're taking him back to the ranch, the pizza ranch. The pizza ranch, the best yeah. part of the day. Yeah. So. Okay, um, so what what does Black want to do here? Is, I think Black, Black just plays Queen F six. I yeah, actually, I, I'm, yeah. I like Forsen now. I think that, I think that she messed it up that big. I think, I think after rookie seven, there had to have been some other approach here. I, I liked knight to c4 originally. That was my idea, was to try to remove the knight. Mm -hmm. I think, I think, yeah. I think he swindled her. I think, I think queen d5 looked like it was winning. It opened up c6. If you take, surely this looks good. But as soon as he played rook d to e8 so quickly, and she went into the think tank, you could just tell that something had gone wrong. Right. Um, I, I was even trying to look after queen f6. Maybe does rook c6 work with the original idea of trying to take get rid of the knight? But after rook takes e6, black just has too many threats on the back rank. That yeah. rook e8 move is continuing to defend his position here. Yeah, and I, it makes me wonder why she, why he played f4, because now I like your rook c6. I think that I think queen f6, gathering that pawn was the best. But... Isn't there like a flavor of Pringles that's Pizza Ranch? I'm coming around to this thing. Maybe Alexandra's right. Maybe there's a thing <gasps> about this Pizza Ranch thing. You gotta try it, Danny. You gotta yeah. try it. Um, yeah. I, I will. Right. Will watch. Will get more cultural references, or I will try. If you try the pizza with ranch, I think it's a fair trade off. Okay. So I'm gonna um, give you like a list of ten movies you gotta watch. Exactly. It'll just. It'll, just, it'll help what's happening here on camera. It'll help this relationship if I can make these references and you're not. Yeah, you know. and once you finally appreciate the finer foods in life, I feel like it's <laughs> right. going to be a different commentary level. Danny uh, Ranch, yes! Danny Ranch, yes! there you go. Oh, coming in with the fire. There could be a flavor there. Um. I, I think so, too. <laughs> Stay away. <laughs> okay, so she did play Rook C6. She did play Rook C6. Um, okay, you, uh, he, she played Rook C6. Rook C6. Rook C6. Rook takes e6, now she can just take the rook back, so that doesn't work anymore. Um, of course, even if rook takes d6, pawn takes, the queen can't come to b7, so things are still not looking good for her. King a7. Um, hmm, it makes you feel like there's going to be something here. Going to be something for white. Maybe now just back up the bishop to f1. Back get the bishop, bishop out of there and, and keep the ideas open of doing something against the king. Right, and then maybe even queen d3 to f pair that up with after. And then the queen would look towards a6. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bishop f1 opens up that. It also opens up tactics on a5. I mean, I'm not saying we could just go sack the queen for fun, but... <laughs> I mean, You'd like bishop, that to be true. We all well, would. Yeah. Exactly. But bishop f1, ha here's a mating idea, though, that makes it true. If bishop f1, rook b1, then you are threatening to take a5, and rook a6 is checkmate. So bishop f1 does have an outside idea that, that there's tactics on a5. And, okay, but she goes bishop d3, but it's the same thing. In fact, maybe her idea is, is what I'm saying, because bishop d3 guards b1, so you can play rook b1 without queen g6 or anything hitting it. Right. So there's there's the possibility that rook b1 threatens queen takes a5 and rook a6 mate. Okay, so black can't just sit here. That's why he played g3 right away, which makes sense, because now he has some serious threats as well. I would um, play rook b1 if I was her. Let it, let him take on f2 or h2. Just move the king. You don't care? Just rook b1? Just honey badger. I, <laughs> I mean, you have to be a little bit like that there. Um and G, so G takes F2. King H1, can she just run away? Hmm. hmm. Well, let's see what Alexander comes up with here. I hope she's going to try it. She does it. I she like does it. it. She I don't care what works. At this point, I'm just like, go for it. Yeah, I mean, she has under a minute. Um, the best chance is to go for attack since otherwise her position is not Snowballs have gotten some once. good. Snowballs have gotten some good points here. I think they're close to clinching. Um, um, I I knew the honey badger reference, and I for those asking in chat, it's a very funny YouTube video with a yeah. very sassy honey badger who does whatever it wants and mm -hmm. doesn't care. Yeah. Yeah. The That's most another... fierce. Well, Queen takes a five is it... no, but it doesn't do anything. Is rook... oh my god! I was Can like about to come run? out of my chair here. 
Because queen takes a5 was what I've been calling for this whole time. I know. At least, at least the queen is still defending on e1, though. Yeah, and there's no mate. Uh, Forsen must have calculated this, because if there's... If there's nothing on b6, this is just heartbreaking, right? You get this, like, super... Super Let's awesome see. queen takes a5, and... Right. Nothing, right? Just a bunch right. of... Just a... Whatever, oh, I man. don't even know. She's thinking the clock is ticking. Uh, I don't, I th yeah, don't probably she has to back up. Now that she backs up, Black is just dominating. There goes her counterplay. Um, obviously, there's still potential sacks on B6 and then opening up the, the files. Maybe there's something there, but... Yeah, and he's just... Uh, Forsen is just bringing pressure. Yep. I wonder if there was even some other weird combination there to take advantage of the back rank that neither player found, but okay. This oh boy. Bishop of one, and where's the uh, where's the beef next? He has to trade. Okay, well that's got to help Kostenyuk. I mean, yeah, this didn't turn out as bad as I thought it was gonna yeah, be. There's definitely uh, drawing chances here for White. Yeah. Bishop d3, I mean, Bishop she... c2 is the idea, I think. Yep, mm -hmm. she goes for it. If she can hang on to her pawn here. Yeah, the problem is King b7. Oh, she didn't see it. As soon as she played G4, I was like, oh, you trapped your own rook. Rook A3 had dual purposes. She just Yeah, and it. she just resigned. That what sucks. a way to finish. That rook sucks a... so bad. It was easy to miss because Rook A3 had this idea. You're thinking, oh, it's cutting off the king. Right. And you just don't. missed that it was actually taking away the square from the rook, and King B7 was coming. That multi-purpose move. Classic. Ten seconds too hard to see all the threats. Well, let's um let's keep our eye on this live game here, but run through some of the results on uh, okay. that that have come to an end here. So we've got Bogdan Belyakov, mm -hmm. uh, who won on time. So he won okay. on time against Automar Ladva. We've got uh, Mikhail Demidov again with a win. He performed very well today for the Moscow Phoenix. I uh, I think a big reason why they may end up getting second place, and I think I think he was the top board two finisher if I'm remembering correctly so we'll, we'll see when we go back to the standings but I know he was playing very well and finished this one off nicely we have all kinds of mates and all kinds of fork emotes coming so he won his mm -hmm. game as we just as we just pointed out uh, Forsen beats Kostinyuk you uh, we, we talked about earlier today <coughs> uh, Alejandro Diaz did not convert on a game he should have but he did meet right. Oleg Vestrukin helping the Raptors overtake the Wizards. Really not a great day for the Wizards overall today. No, um, it definitely hasn't been. And uh, another game in the books was this one here. Between Oops. Pants Leia, just kidding, <laughs> Ponsu Leia versus Kolars, yes. where uh, Pons Ponsulia actually fell. So... Those are some other games that you may have missed. Actually, we should point out that Volkov did eventually take down Hannah, which uh, was kind of what we saw coming, and he finished it off nicely. Oh, right, because she had blundered that pawn, and I think he, he converted clean. The last top player game is this one here, where Hammer is actually about to fall to Luka Lenich. Wow. Oh, boy. And we, we, saw, we saw his position earlier, and exactly what happened is... I mean, he he's down a piece too, but I'm guessing his pawn structure ended up being the problem. Yeah, hammer hammer uh, falling here. That's going to be a huge one for the gnomes, more so than I think the turtles. The turtles will likely, yeah, I, I think they're finishing in last place either way, but it could actually prevent the gnomes from either overtaking the raptors or even being overtaken by the horses. We'll see how many other games are still going. Right, so, they were in, in the fourth place trying to fight for three going into this match, and now... Oh, yep. God. Well, he's going to fall. So, this one is. Let's leave this one behind because I think the only one that really matters, that one's just over, uh, is yeah. this game between Garga Tagali. Garga Tagli. <clears throat> Garga Tagali. Garga Tagli. Garga Tagli. Yep. Garga Tagli. Again, guys, five times fast. Take a yep. video. Tag me on Twitter. We'll retweet. Garga Tagli. If I do it, you'll also retweet? Yes. Um, I had to think about that one. <laughs> I know. You should always, always. Um, Always think about that. Oh, we missed Queen takes D3. Yeah, he did. Now Queen um, E4, and it's just over. That's a problem. Now he has Gargatogli's to pass Gargatogli's going to fall. Gregorians will take it, and that'll be a, uh, a a win that actually brings the Wizards back into a tie with the Estonia Horses, um, and something that hurts the Raptors 
and their chances ultimately to to come back with the gnomes. So, um, hammer falling hurt the gnomes, but apparently not enough. And uh, wherever that last result that just came in, I don't even know what the game was that we missed, but right. um, the Raptors <clears throat> will stay there, and I think the standings are going to finish just as you see it, with the Wizards moving into a tie. The Wizards will have 12 and a half. Mm -hmm. um, after that game, the Raptors will stick right where they are. So the standings as they finish will be what you see. The Tbilisi gentlemen up top. The uh, Baden, Baden Snowballs barely held off the Moscow Phoenix in the last round. So, Georg Meyer, if you're listening, next time, shame on you. Don't take a draw there. <laughs> That's you, you, that almost, you almost saw your team get overtaken. I mean, in his defense, he was playing Joe Bavo. Yes. So... But, but again, we want action, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I tried to say that to him first, and then I hear someone else doing it. I'm like, well, hang on. Yeah, yeah. well, I know. It was my fault. I try not to get too overly biased and critical when those things happen because I think it's like, I don't know. I don't know why I do. I just. No, just, it, it's but, fair. It's but fair. the truth I is, you just you wish you wish that they played out. They played out the games. Although, again, to be fair, it's much later where they are than it is for us here right. in the U.S. on the West Coast. So, um, that's fair. The Gnomes and the Raptors were very close, but the Gnomes ultimately held them off. Estonia and the Wizards will finish in a 6th and 7th place tie. And the Ljubljana Turtles, just not their best day. Despite, look at the board once there. Luka Lenich, with 4.5 points, was the yeah. second best board one on the day behind Bador Jabava. Right, and that was the theme. He was playing really well, but it, it just, his team was just struggling. Mikhail oh. Demidov there was ultimately the top performing board too. So uh, a big reason why the Moscow Phoenix did as well as they did today. Uh, mm -hmm. Kuparadze and Volkov. I mean, those two guys are clearly two of the most underrated, biggest pickups that any team can boast this season. Kuparadze and Volkov, if you don't know, you see them right there at the bottom of board three and board four, but at the top mm -hmm. in terms of their points. They play right. for the Tbilisi gentlemen, and I mean, they really led the way. They both finished with more points than Jabava. Take that, Jabava. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Right? Um, no, it's true, and I mean, th there were there were a lot of strong picks as well. Um, I mean, Sergei Grigorians also played very well. We saw that throughout. Um, yep. Good picks. Good picks. Really tough competition today. I mean. The, it doesn't uh, look that way by the Tbilisi gentleman steamrolling through, but from the games we saw. Yep. Great performance from the Gnomes, who only fielded one GM today from RM2K. Good point. Good point. I didn't really think about that angle, but it's a good point, right? The Gnomes did hold their own, despite maybe not uh, posting what will be probably their strongest potential lineup throughout the year. So mm -hmm. um, if we want to show the standings one more time, now that we know how this did, just to we'll kind of speculate, even though they won't be updated instantly, let's just bring them up to show... Okay. What this will mean for people, because the gnomes and bottom bottom, it looks like there'll maybe be a small shakeup there, but still really not much changes in the central with Norway, bottom bottom, and Barcelona. All kind of, they'll still be first, second, and third after today. Right. Um, um, so I guess this was, for for the gnomes, it was a little upsetting since they, they did have a little bit of a lead. Um, yep. Comfortable enough, more even than the gentlemen did with, with the eagles. I think the biggest shakeup we'll see is in the Eastern Division, where uh, the Wizards will no longer be in third place after today. I think yep. uh, for sure you'll see uh, both both Tbilisi, Armenia, and Mumbai all ahead of them. And I, I don't I don't know off the top of my head how Delhi did earlier, um, but uh, that's something that we'll certainly keep our eye on. So, yep. all right. Well, um, let's remind everybody of the schedule and when we'll be live next. Before we head out, the next show is. Wednesday, February 5th, we will be back to the regular format of the uh, Atlantic, playing only Atlantic teams, Pacific on Pacific action, and then in Febu on February 7th, Eastern and Central will we'll throw down once again. But there you have it. We I won't shout out every single date. Remember, the playoffs start in March, and we should have an announcement very, very soon in regards to what the city and location will be for this year's live uh, Pro Chess League finals. So I'm really looking forward to that. I'm definitely going to encourage people who watch the stream to come hang out. Yep. Everybody, everybody who's there, get ready to buy your plane tickets and then buy your tickets because there likely will be an admission fee this year as we're expecting um, higher attendance and uh, adding some more bells and whistles. So even cooler to be a part of it 
than it was previously. So shout out oh. to Aaron who did so well today. What you don't know, everybody, is that Aaron has been struggling, not feeling his best in terms of the flu, but he pushed through. Aaron, Aww. you're just you're just an angel. You're a hero. We don't need another oh. hero. We don't need it. We need, we need yeah. a hero. Maybe he should have jamboozled some of that vitamin yeah, C. Yeah, I'll drop you off in a little bit, yeah. So we'll grab some lunch if you want. But you're sick, so I don't know what we're going to get. All right, well, but, thanks um, again to everybody, all the mods, BJH13. Also, sub, sub Saturday, I'm guessing you'll announce those at the end. Crazy Coffee Man, T, welcome back, Mana. Uh, thanks so much, Cash Bank, for all the bits. And Chess Bay, of course. Chess Bay and... Uh, all the mods, as you said. Also, wind over there in the Chess TV chat. We've seen you there as well. So thank you so much. Um, the uh, I, I think this is where where we come to it. I'm gonna I'm gonna say goodbye here to you, Miss Botez, and say goodbye to everybody. And uh, we will we will roll out. The Pro Chess League rages on. Thanks to everybody who's been here the whole time, and thanks to all of our followers, subscribers. Yeah, thank you, Danny. I had a great time. Everybody. All right, well, um, take care. Enjoy your weekend, both you, Miss Botez, and everybody else. Yes. And, uh, and we're going to head out. All right, sounds good. Bye, everyone.